Welcome to Warrior Class. Where the teachers will pass. And you will too. If you pass. All right. This is the Mathematics Martial Art, Mathematic Martial Arts episode. Uh, We had a science, the sciences of self-defense episode. Um, And now we want to deal with math. And we'll be bringing in a mathematician, not today, but a mathematician, a scientist, and an artist. Yes. Uh, to discuss what martial arts is to them and how they approach martial arts as the thing that they are. Right? I'm actually all of those things, but yeah, we don't want yeah. to look too good on camera, so we're going to bring some other <laughs> folks in. Uh, and we, we, we actually <laughs> should be uh, some of all of that anyway as martial artists. Most of us are, though. Yeah. If you never, I well, never realized until I got into it. I know some martial listening. artists that. <laughs> Most the good martial artists yeah, yeah, usually have exactly. a sense of humor, and they usually are they're artists in something else. That's usually a good a good sign to tell. I'm forward in our show because a friend called and asked me to, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. And we advise you to hit the share button piece of, uh is that you Mr. Mason? We I know you always in the building, and thank you, sir. For your uh, purchase, I think you he got two shirts from you, ah, so I we appreciate you. Uh, and you should have received maybe your other one, maybe on the way, but I know you got the the first one. And Forty J Blaze, peace, peace. You see everybody, peace else everybody. Uh, T T Nega seventy four. T who? What what? T Nega. Oh, oh, okay, okay, nice. yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I got that. Solidarity forever, comrade Emmanuel Briggs. Uh, hello, everyone. Salute, salute everybody. Peace. Peace, comrades. What is a blade? Eugene Mason. So, Clarissa, uh, welcome, Clarissa Francois. Ooh, new member. Okay. I like that. I like that. Uh, Peace. Um, okay. Great job. I can't even. Uh, see. Where do I go to get the Gregory merchandise? Jones. Peace, everybody. Gregory Jones, if you must relate to somebody on here. Yeah. So, Uja. Oh, shit. I'm Uja Saneb. Warriors. Oh, oh that's my cousin right there. There, there, you go. there you go. Where do I go to get merchandise? You go to the Warrior Class IG page. That's a Warrior Class BPM on Instagram, and you'll see the link. Uh, you just hit, or I tell you what, just DM us, and we'll send the link. We try to post it on here, but for some reason, it just won't show up. So if you DM us on uh, or Facebook or Instagram, mm-hmm. DM, DM DM us and we'll send it to you. Um, you even if uh, you send it to the African Martial Arts Institute uh, IG, we'll send you the link and you can purchase there. And we appreciate you guys. We appreciate your support. Appreciate you sharing the broadcast. Appreciate you liking. And uh, before we get into it, just want to make sure, you know, we're going to have to do a, a check. I'm, we're going to pop in at your houses. I'm just making sure y'all got these tools y'all supposed <laughs> to have before the summer is over now. So the first one, we, you know, you're supposed to always have some type of some blades on you. But this is a very in, uh, inexpensive tool to get right here uh, for all ages can have this. This is a pen by all uh, marker. Uh, yeah, a marker, all purposes. It's called a pocket sharp. I know we talked about it before, but just in case somebody has not seen this, and I'm not promoting the company, just I don't know anybody else that makes them exactly like this, to be honest with you. So it's just a pen. It's um, it's not steel. It's not metal. This is a uh, polymer. Yeah, it's polymer. So it goes with me everywhere on the plane, trains, automobiles, into the clubs. Uh, my hook breaks off of everyone. I might have about six of these. So it's like a pen. It has a little thing you can put it right here. You put it in your pocket however you want to take it and if you watch class enough you know you hold it you know how to grip it properly and it's going to do something it's going to do something yeah, you can definitely defend yourself with that um you seven eight dollars right you can get uh a sharpie that's what they they call it a pocket shark and it's close to that Right. Sharpie uh, sound, but uh, the alliteration of, of Sharpie, sharp, sharp, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, so you can get the Sharpie markers, the king size, I believe it's called. The it's, magnum it's, something. It's made something. of metal, and it's about the same size. Don't get the plastic one. No, you hell no. You only use them once. No, no. 
Yeah, you think go, hard plastic, but you're only gonna be able to use those. Yeah, ones. get the get the metal ones. Yeah, use uh one company called Magnum something. But, uh, it's the same one. The same one. Just okay. the, uh, so it's the King and it's the Magnum. Yeah. Uh, uh, the King is longer. Right. Um, they're about the same thickness. So get the one as long as it's, it's, it's about as long as this. Yeah, my that's one of the key things I make sure my daughter have. Of course, I have to buy one every year because she loses it. But um, it's in little things like this, man. It's important to have versus not have. And so for those who get tactical pans, you can't take tactical pans, even if it's a tactical pan is polymer. That's recognized by TSA as a as a as a tool. Right. So they want to allow you to bring that on, but this year. I brought right. it in my pocket. I brought it uh, in my uh, carry-on bag. Never had a problem. Even if they know what it is, it, right. it doesn't it's, matter because it's still a pen. I've had security. And it's blunt, whereas a right. tactical pen sometimes have a point. Right. I've had security look at it. And say, man, I don't understand. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I unscrew it, show him it's a pen. He look at it, read it, see you see the brand right here that's familiar. Yeah. He know that brand. Got to give it back to him, you know. So that's important, you know, to have things like that you can always have on you besides um, unconventional tools that you may have with you. Now, I went on with my uh, shot gloves, and uh, I had them on. I said, let me take my gloves off, put them on the thing. Mm. <laughs> I said, well, you know, my, my, my biker gloves, my rock. Can you put them in your in your bag now? Not not go back and put it. Can you put yeah. that in your bag? I don't want to look at it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> like, this, this, this some old high-tech looking spacey gloves. Now, see, I tried the Wolverine joints, but they wouldn't let me <laughs> <laughs> Now, that would saying. be dope. <laughs> so, with those, with those gloves, the, the, the shot gloves, um, of course, I had removed the electric uh, wires and the shit like that. Otherwise, they wouldn't let me bring. I don't think they right. Yeah. Bring that on there. Mm. Um, I also carry gloves that that uh, non scratch, non cut. You know, the gloves I have oh, in yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those I wear those when we training in class. So I don't get my hands jacked up. They got enough scars from actual combat, right? So. Uh, I wear, I carry those with me. So when we get on the plane, I don't really remember to take those out. That and my and my uh, first aid kit. I've never been stopped, even though the first aid kit got a. Uh, I'm not telling you to do this, but they've never stopped me and don't go snitching on me. You <laughs> they've never stopped, even though the first aid kit got a scalpel. And they got to be able to see it through the x-ray thing. When you started to saying it, I started realizing it is one in my little bag, too. And I, you don't think about it. Right. I wasn't doing it on purpose. Right. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. And you should always have a little first day. Now, see, there's uh, somebody asking, what's the brand that makes this pen? Just um, look for Pocket Shark. Yeah, we're going to want to say the brand. Well, they ain't paying us. Yeah, yeah. It's Pocket so, Shark, and you'll find one. <laughs> if you find a copycat, hey. Is it, is yeah, if you find a copycat, let us know because we've only found from this company. Right, and we yeah, and we always got to end up buying from them, and they they don't cut us no deals. I know we done bought a million of them. <laughs> right. So uh, Simon, we got two Joneses on set. Okay, si uh, Simone Jones. Wait a minute, they they gotta be some candy. Simone man. Jones was that Simon that? or Simone? Let me know because I spell no Simone is with an E. Yeah. That's Simon. Simon Jones, warmest greetings. Polymer is a good uh, good material. You are correct. Yes. And was okay, thank you. They, In fact, when we bring the scientists on, we'll have him speak on polymers. Ah. I wanted he he he's a polymer expert. That's what he, he makes. I wanted to get him to make weapons for us. Well, excuse me, tools for us. Speaking of just real quick, man. This my you know, I'll be trying to study. I, I study history of war, different things that I've been getting into, and I was studying Stalin. Stalin, huh? And I did not know. He had a so he wanted to make a super soldier. Mm -hmm. So he got a scientist. The scientists went to Africa to get the to get chimps, right? Mm -hmm. But the chimps he couldn't artificially inseminate them. So what he wanted to do was inseminate African women mm -hmm. with chimpanzee sperm without them knowing. 
and the government found out, get, get your ass from out of here. And I, I was like, yo, I can't believe that shit. And the thing is, some people think he still did it before he left. He had started maybe doing it. And the, and the reason is that, you know, that <laughs> I see Bollywood. No, but uh, <laughs> not only to one or two, because they talk about that, that uh, famous chimp, Oliver, the one that had the flat head and everything. Yeah, the one that walked upright for years and all that. And it was just different than all that, had different hands and all that. So, my, gross, yeah, yeah, I just, I just, yo, what, boy, what some folks won't do. Yeah, you it's know not what gross mean? that he walked in that different. It's gross his name's Oliver. <laughs> that they call why they always like name that. it right, his name right. was not Oliver they made it they making me call him Oliver he ain't know his name was Oliver I can't stand when they do that to that's another thing why I'm on this real quick I'm gonna get off all you black folks can go to zoos I'm mad at you I'm mad at you you should feel the weight I only went to the zoo as a child went once or twice I'm not saying I went to almost every zoo as a child I can't even remember the zoo is like the museum the natural museum when they put black folks shit in it yeah it's like as I got older, I went once. I took my daughter, and we both were sad. Animals don't want to look at you. They don't just turn uh, their back on you. They like they look at me like like mama. You you know you should know what this is. I felt well. I felt like I want to see world. It's ridiculous. Well, the one yeah, thing I learned, one thing I learned at the zoo that it stuck with me. I, I, I uh, don't tigers don't movie. roar. Like, yeah, when I find lions out, roar, tigers moan. It's, it's, it's a different. Sound right? I'm like, what the hell is that? Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, only like the two or three big cats, and then the rest of them make monkey Dippy sounds sound. and all types. Right, of right. Well, you know, gorillas roar, and a lot of times. So, if you've ever seen the movie Forty Eight Hours, and you hear Gans is the villain, he's shooting uh, with the revolver. And, oh, oh, oh. So I'm like, that's like a shotgun, but that's actually. A shotgun uh midi together with a gorilla's roar to give it that explosive sound. Wow. No revolver sounds that powerful. I've shot uh 357, I've shot 44 Magnums, they don't sound like that. I've shot 357 Sig, which is a semi-automatic 357. None of them sound like that. You made me think of something we talked about um before. You talked about this before and and when I was, I was also been watching a documentary about the mind and how powerful your thoughts is and how you to project them and all that stuff we always talked about in class, but now they got computers to figure that say it's true. But um, it made me think about what you were saying, how your thoughts are so powerful. We don't realize it, that you can like Bob always say like, yo, I ain't, I ain't dying to get up. I'm gonna take my head, even you cut my head off. I'm gonna I'm a kid and walk over to the side of the street with my head and I'm gonna die. And it's it's funny, but you've seen people with incredible will. And I'm I'm only saying this, I was thinking about how you said some people get shot and fly through the window and shit. Yeah, because they've seen that shit. Right. Somebody else though may have seen somebody take nine bullets. You know what I'm saying? And their reality will happen when they get shot, it's gonna be different. And I just, it, I think about how powerful the mind is. You get shot in your arm, you might die if you think, you, if you think you're going to die. I saw, well, this dude I know, his uh, his wife may be, his ex-wife may be watching him, but she is seeking to bear me witness, but I'm not telling secrets or back, you know. <clears throat> it may be embarrassing to him. He shot indoor range. Mr. Target hit a metal post. And it ricocheted and grazed him. <laughs> and he I'm was already. throwing up. Oh, shit, wait a minute. <laughs> because he thought that's what's supposed to happen. Like, why? Why? When he's telling him, like, why were you passing out and vomiting? The hell? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm grazed. Being grazed. Because I'm like, what? The bullet was in your arm? No, no, it grazed me. I've been grazed. Why are you? I've been great. Me too. I even lie. Why are you throwing up? <laughs> Why are you <laughs> feverish and shit? What, what? Because watching movies and shit told him he's supposed to be like that. I didn't see a movie that showed me how to react when I got great, so I didn't know. Yeah, how to react. Yeah. I just it just burnt like a motherfucker. The, the, the stuff I like, think great. <laughs> Well, I've watched like movies. You graze, you, ah, and then you put a bandaid on that motherfucker. Right, you keep going. You fight, right. So, luckily, I saw those movies. I don't know what he watched. 
<laughs> but but um, people have been shot with a nine millimeter. Nine millimeter doesn't have the force to take you off your feet, and they fly through windows and shit because they have watched movies where that happens, and they think that's supposed to happen. So it's them throwing themselves through the window. Really? Yeah, the mind, man. So I just wanted to mention that will your will had played such a big part in your survival, man. You have to want. I was um, and Jason I Jason said her husband has this. He must be a brave man. <laughs> uh, and what I'm drinking is mushroom coffee. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm not preaching, right, but right. mushroom coffee, coffee can, for some people, can uh, cause gut issues. Mm-hmm. This actually heals gut issues. While giving you a psychedelic experience. No, no, not shroom coffee. Oh, okay. So I didn't understand ah. what was happening right now. I was about to say, damn. No, but what's crazy? Out Thirty minutes left. Close. My, my, my twenty-three-year-old, <laughs> my twenty-three-year-old tells my fourteen-year-old, "Daddy gave me some shroom coffee." <laughs> and I was tripping. I said, "So she said I drank the coffee. That's mushroom coffee." The mind, right? The listen. So she thinks she's tripping off shrooms. I said, first of all. If I had shroom coffee, it'd be expensive shit. And two, I wouldn't be giving it to my children. The mind. Not even my this adult is, children. So this is last this is a little story I'm gonna give you. Back in my criminal days, this was in this was over 20 years ago. So when I first moved here in the 90s, I was trying to hustle. So I got this um some some really bad weed. It was before all the crazy stuff came out, just regular weed back then. So I let it sit and get and condensation got on and it molded. You know what I'm saying? And at the time, I smoked cigarettes and everything. Did I smoke cigarettes? I was just stopping smoking cigarettes. And, and what molded now? The weed molded because I had left a bag oh, open. Yeah. Oh, the wet so the, the wet, the moisture made it mold. So it turned it kind of white. It turned mm-hmm. it kind of white. And so I got the stuff they had in Starship called Tasty Puff. It's flavor you put on tobacco. <laughs> And I put, I had, I got some blueberry flavor, no, no joke. And I put blueberry drops. I put, I took it all out. It was sticky in there. I put it in these little try to make it taste better. Put blueberry flavor on it. Went to the college, and for the little <laughs> man, I charged twenty five dollars and told everybody it was chronic. And it, I'm talking about it was. I I smoked it before. It it did not smoke good. It was disgusting. No, really? It smelled like blueberry, but it it was like tobacco. It was so old and How molded. High. You didn't get high. <laughs> you, if you got high, maybe like a buzz or so. Let me tell you, people took that weed because of mine. Because of the mind. I said it's chronic. Chronic wasn't there yet, but the songs up. Folks was coming back like with the eyes closed. I swear to God. And I had friends with me that was laughing. Folks was coming back with their eyes going, "Yo." Let me get another one of them things. Man, their eyes fully just—I mean, closed shut like this. One dude from Cali said, "Yo, let me get one of them." Got one. He said, "What the?" So I put to say, "Say, yo, man, this ain't no motherfucker. What the bullshit? What's a mold or something? What the fuck?" I said, "Look, man, you fucking my shit up, bro. I know it ain't cry. Just go buy. You know what I'm saying? Blah This is all I got. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here trying to make the mind." It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. And I was, you know, I'm no longer have any of those now uh, criminality. I'm gonna ask this. <laughs> One of the few ch- times I smoke, I smoke with some folks, and as I'm smoking, the room is tilting and shit. Like oh, oh. Lord, oh so Lord. I said, I think I'm gonna have to kill all these people. <laughs> oh shit. They didn't poison me or something. So, so I said logically they got to die. So, yeah. <laughs> so I said, so I said to myself, shit, I think they poisoned me. I'm gonna have to kill them. Oh. And I said, but maybe I'm just high. So I left the room and went into my hotel room. Okay. And I'm in there just like I'm I'm drunk. Like I, I didn't drunk a goddamn whole fifth of gin or something. What weed was that? So and, and, and the person I, I confronted them later, they said it was chronic and it was just too much for me. Does chronic get you high like that where you the world tilting? Yes, it could have been chronic. It oh, could have okay. just been chronic. If you're not a smoker, mm-hmm. I've had. A, I've, I, well, I'm glad I didn't kill everybody. Thank you for not killing everybody. <laughs> I want to thank you for half of the people who are in was in that. Play. I want to thank. But no, y'all could probably vouch. My dad was one of those people. Some people smoke weed and it's not for them, and you can tell because they start doing like this. They start looking around. <laughs> they start looking around. Now, I ain't all, naming no name, but I, I've been married to that person for. 23 years. That's all I'm gonna say. When you're like that, 
One sign about you should smoke weed if your eyes actually get big instead of low. You shouldn't be smoking. So that's the first sign. Yeah. When you do like this and you smoking weed and you start holding, when they start doing oh, this right shit. here, oh shit, oh shit. Well, my wife does it. She smoked uh, for her birthday. Uh, she had smoked with a couple of my students, right? And so she comes back in. I'm playing cards with, with one of the students, and she she goes up to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it was it was so strange in her eyes that you know our children would usually clown you, laughing. The children would keep sitting down, you okay? And they were concerned. It wasn't they weren't clowning or nothing. Listen, <laughs> you fuck around with wrong stuff, you don't smoke weed like that. It is it could just be weed. It could cause it's I got so paired, I, I didn't smoke for a couple of years and I tried to smoke again when the weed got stronger. And I smoked with a friend. And I felt fine with the friends. I left and went to McDonald's in the drive-thru. And I'm just in the drive-thru and paranoia just hit. I was like, oh, this is how I feel when you're about to die. You know it. But nobody around and you don't say nothing and then you die. Right. So next thing I look in the rearview mirror and it's these dudes and the, and the cutters in the back just doing like this. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, they the ones. They gonna kill me. They gonna kill me. They gonna kill me. And one of them, so the line taking so long, we don't we don't count on the road. So the line is right around. Dude, get out the car. Uh oh. So one of them get out the car, and when he walk in, he's saying some old I'll kill the shot or something, something. I skip right out the uh drive through and jump <laughs> paranoid to death. So yeah, stay off the drugs, ladies and gentlemen. If it's not for you, look, don't do it. Some people well, ain't supposed to do everything. You know, I so after that chronic. <laughs> smoking, but anything, you know, uh, I smoke like maybe once every four or five years. Yeah, yeah. But I said, well, I'll do the edible. Why do we both all have I know this. I was watching. <laughs> you look like you got day. on blue on. You know, I know, that's interesting. Hair, that's it. So that happens with us a lot. So mm -hmm. I ended up getting, you, you know, one of our students gave me <laughs> some brownies. Uh oh. And it, it was, you know, a big thing of brownies wrapped in the foil. He said, Baba. Only eat a little bit. <laughs> You're not a smoker. Don't just just take a little bit. This is my gift to you. You know, I said, "Oh, thank you." And so I had it, and I was writing the book. I'm drinking coffee late at night, and I said, "Man, I need something to drink with coffee." I said, "Oh, I got some brownies. Forgot mm -hmm. that it's infused brownies." So I'm eating the brownies. I said, "God damn, these are good. It's caramel and man." So I'm eating the brownies. I ate the whole fucking thing, which is too much for regular brownies anyway. I tore those brownies up and then I went to sleep. <laughs> but I woke up. That's I, bad because you were. My hand was on, on the on the chair, my finger went like this. <laughs> and I felt that I woke up. I said, Oh, what the hell? I couldn't, the room was completely black. And then the light came on. I, I didn't touch nothing. The light just came <laughs> on. I said, What the? I said, Oh shit. I said, I'm, I'm about to die. I said, don't, don't, that, that was weed. I ate too much weed. So I said, I don't want my children to come down here and find me dead. Yes, yeah, so I said, I don't want my children to find me dead. I didn't know I was dealing with the paranoia of it, right? I said, so I'm going to go upstairs and lay down. I said, but no, nah, then y'all going to be tripping that I ate all this uh, weed brownies. So I, but she, she sleep deep. I just go up and lay with her so the children don't find me. She find me dead. She can deal with the trauma. I'm a baby's mind. I said, "Well, no." So I'm arguing. And finally, I just go up. I just go up and lay next to her. I said, "She's gonna find me dead." So I kissed her on her back. That's my last kiss goodbye. And I just put my head. And then when I woke up the next morning, I, I, I looked around, make sure I wasn't dead. I wasn't, I wasn't in the heavens or something. I said, "Well, I know she ain't dead." And I you hear her snoring, you so I made it. I said, "I don't know how I made it." But I was, man, I was jacked up for about four days. Uh, you don't like my music. It sounds like the weed in Ireland is probably trash. <laughs> from what we say, from our <laughs> stories. Smokers don't, need, smokers don't need edibles. No, y'all don't. I need edibles. Yeah, yeah, smokers don't, smoke. don't need edibles. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't edibles don't do things. shit for me. Too expensive, too. Yeah, y'all y'all be saying that. Y'all yeah, be saying that. Trash. But but <laughs> marijuana, so edibles hit you faster. And I've been told they hit you harder. I don't know. It's it's uh, this is what I've heard. Um, it is a full body high, 
It's not like I see aliens if I smoke strong flashbacks. <laughs> it's from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Well, yeah. when I, I did edibles at home, edibles that I, I won't name the person, they gave me edibles. Said mm-hmm. a friend of theirs had made edibles. I won't name who it is. <laughs> a friend had made edibles, so they wanted me to be a taste tester. <laughs> so I, I tasted the shit. I said, man, what the fuck? So I ate it and I'm writing oh, always, you know, when I'm writing it, let me expand my mind. And a panther wrote grand poppy. <laughs> I said, the fuck? But I started laughing because I, I know I'm high. I said, I'm high as shit. Cause there ain't no panthers in the house. Now some people be terrified by that, but I'm, I'm like, you know. And so as I'm writing, panther go on the other side. <laughs> I said, yeah. Was it a black panther? Of course. Ain't no white panther coming my out. It was a black panther. A, a, a white panther, even in my goddamn hallucination with a dupe, it, it is a kind of burying left. So I was high as hell off of that, right? I called him and said, man, what the fuck? I only took a pitch. And I, I said, you didn't say that. I, said, I took, I took a pitch. And that shit had me high as shit. And he had all pretty, so it looked like, you know, those uh, rice cream. Crispy crunch things, but it was colorful and it had it had like a noun later on top of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is this? But I'm gonna try it. it Woo wee! It was beautiful. It was too much though. It yeah. was too much. I said, no, no, no. Yeah, no, so um, that, that's the problem. I just want to say I don't have any weed stories. I am as pure as. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. yeah. We were training in class. We were training in class. She stumbled in, and I, I said, hey, on me, nigga, she slapped the shit out of me. I said, what the hell? Tell y'all, y'all and she said, well, it was telling me to do it. <laughs> now, this is this is mushroom cheap. Oh, wow. So you, you about to get to it. No, not, not, I knew everybody think of that. Not shroom tea, mushroom. <laughs> now, but, but, but saying that, maybe that's something we should invest in making. Mm. We mm. can... Hey. And we got the place to sell it because my, my wife was like, she want, she's like, man, the mushroom chocolate bar. I said, dude, you can't sell that shit here. Hell no. <laughs> shit, the feds be. Let me stay parachuting down. They gonna sell <laughs> right. They I said, hell no. And she was like, <laughs> man. She watched, she watched how it expanded my mind, right? Mm-hmm. And even, I'm not a drinker. I, I tell you, two beers, I'm drunk. So one beer, I'm buzzing hard. <laughs> I was in a certain city with certain family members. And this family member likes to drink. So he's giving me drink. I'm drinking with him. My wife said, you sure you want to? I said, I'm, I'm cool. I don't feel nothing. After two beers, mm. three beers, four beers. But I already taken one little square of the candy, shroom candy. Six beers later. Oh. I have no buzz because beer, the, the drunk feeling is, you know, it's, it's killing your brain cell. Right. But, but mushroom, it, it grows <laughs> bright brain cells and doesn't allow your brain cells to die. Just regular mushrooms. Right. Right, right. Like well, this, like I was talking about this kills, uh, like instead of hurting your gut, like coffee, it heals your gut. Right. And that's- it, 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 it expands your, your mind. It gives you focus, right? Well, shrooms. Yeah. mushrooms anyway they, they do the same but more powerfully right so i didn't get drunk and so my wife is like damn we need to have this at the shop this will help people <laughs> i said yeah it'll help you but it hurt us when they come down like you said re- repelling down <laughs> off the roof and shit <laughs> kind of the now she's talking about doing that so i've been doing the mushroom coffee it's great she hated it she tasted it she's like oh, oh hell no it's mm-hmm. gross, but for coffee drinkers, I've never tried it, but I, I think it's not bad. Too. Yeah, it's not bad. And it's if you um, like if you have some um issues like that, you might be dealing with um dealing with your brain for any reasons. I know a lot of people that came from came off of COVID experienced that brain fog, mm-hmm. and like I did, and it was noticeable to me enough where I was like, what's the word? I'm always doing that. I wasn't coming up with it. I will not. I will tell you that, uh, you know, like I said, any type of mushrooms aid in that, you know, helping your brain cells, your brain stimulating your brain and everything. So try that. You know, I'm not saying I'm not advocating to try the psychedelics. I'm just saying mushrooms, like lime mains, right. mushroom coffee. Try those things, man. They may 
have um, good effects on it. They did a, they did really good for me. You know. Now this I don't I didn't know about. I don't know if this is so. You don't like my music says cocaine lets you drink way too much too. Oh, we know that. <laughs> yeah, you. So think about the movie. This is what I always tell people about that. Remember the movie that Denzel did when he was the pilot. Uh huh. Remember how? Oh, that's movie? right. Yeah, you oh, can yeah. be you can be out of it. I've seen people sloppy, but go in the room, come back and be like, okay, let's what's happening now? Let's get this together, ready to go. Got everything. Sure. 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 But you you're gonna pay for that. So yeah, you're gonna be straight. The thing about drugs like that is, and I've never done it, but I've been around every drug. I won't front to you. It that's a deposit. It's like food eating fake food, oh, you. and you got energy for a minute, and then you get the itis. Mm -hmm. Cocaine, ten the equity out of your it's body. Twenty to thirty crash. times worse. Wow. When they take it back from you, and dope is even. Dope is the biggest. And so what do you need to do? Keep doing some more? You're going to have to keep So doing. that's how the addiction happens. Exactly. And so that's, you see, dope is even worse. You can't do that. Dope, when it, when you when you come down, you are physically attacked. Mm -hmm. right. The other shit you mentally just, you feel, but dope make it, you can't, I've seen dudes on dope couldn't pick up their phone to call somebody. Well, I've seen alcohol, bed, so alcohol after a while would do you like that too. It oh, causes, yeah. it causes your hangover and stuff. Too. Yeah, oh, your alcohol is the nastiest. Now, I had a professor, he probably could have could have lost his job for teaching this, mm. a psychology professor at Howard. He said that if you take a test drunk, I mean, if you not take a test drunk, if you study for a test drunk, mm -hmm. get drunk before you take the test too. Because if you don't, you had a deficit, but if you drink again, you're in that same state that you studied in. Now, nobody's ever told me that, but weed is like that. Weed is like that. It's funny thing about mm -hmm. weed. Uh, yeah, it's certain, yeah, yeah. Weed well, he was saying, yeah, about anything that oh, that you do in that state. Mm -hmm. if you do, whatever you do in the other state, if you want the same, you know, to, to be at your best that you study for, whatever, do it in the other state. Always now, I had a student. Try that with with we doing one of our martial arts tests. Mm. He turned gray. He had smoked so much, and I, I, I could just smell it on. <clears throat> so, we, I mean, you can smell weed anyway, but I mean, it was just yeah. leaking out his pores. Yeah. So I had them training hard. His skin turned goddamn. He's your complexion. It was gray. You got your nose. <laughs> I love so it. He was messed up. <laughs> I hope he learned himself from and, that. That's and, why I love that kind of stuff. Well, <laughs> Kunle jumped in his ass. Y'all don't know Kunle, but. But you uh, do. Right. <laughs> but but you do, yes. We've talked about it many times. Uh, and Kunle was in his ass about, dude, you don't come to class like that. Right. Like, man. Said you're lucky the bottle goon didn't just you know I'm gonna spy everybody because he would have effed you up. You know he's like I'm, I'm already ready. He said you ain't ready now. You look like you're about to pass out. He was mm -hmm. throwing up. It was and I never seen weed affect somebody adversely like that. Yeah, see that's another thing. I've seen people that throw up when they smoke weed. Even after the even people that smoke. I remember back in the days smoking with a dude. This is when I was a teenager. And they would throw up if they smoked too much weed. Now we were always picking them and like, who throws up off of weed? <laughs> it's like alcohol for him. Mm -hmm. He would smoke two, three blunts and then he throw up. He could be the blunts. He feel bad. Uh, that could be it. Well, I tell you, yeah, exactly. We were smoking nice. Phillies and all them yeah, disgusting yeah, exactly. harsh. <laughs> now I tell you, uh, in workouts, I, I don't lift weights that heavy, but. It, James, James, I didn't know, I think James would tell you, probably could tell you, heavy weight lifters, they'll lift heavy and then go off through up and then come back. Mm. But my boy Khalil was like that. Now, Khalil was a monster. He had 27 in his biceps. Mm. And when he was getting ready for competitions, he would lift to, to cut up, right? And he would be lifting so much for hours. He, he would go to the bathroom, come back. I said, you have to pee everything. So I'm going to throw up. It was a natural type part shit. of their shit. Wow. Now, um, in track, when you run track, the first time I ran the 400, like to win, I lapped this dude 
It was terrible when you left. Four hundred is only one lap around. That's bad. I That's ate this bad. dude. He was terrible. <laughs> But I was running at my full pace, and you know, I had Olympic times in 400 and 200, right? It ain't something I, you just want to just do every day, right? I ran that shit, and my body bag was gonna lock up after I was done. I went off to the side, laid down, well, mistake, never do that. Mm. And I just <laughs> and couldn't move, and just vomiting, 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 and just laying in my vomit. I couldn't move because my legs hurt so bad. So exercising will do it too. Exercise. Oh, James is here. Squatting till failure can make you vomit. Yeah, I, I said James in here. You know, yeah, that, definitely. That uh, lifting those weights can make you vomit. Yeah, anything with legs because four hundred yeah. is your legs, right? A Tesla bottle can make you vomit. I definitely <laughs> felt like I was going to throw up a bunch of times and just didn't. I was like, yo, I'm not throwing up because nobody else ain't never throwing up. Well, well Kunle said to me one time, we're doing the test, and I had on a new. Dope. A new martial art uniform that I had made for me it was it was it was like an African clothes, but it was short, short mm -hmm. and white, and it was beautiful. And I'm testing everybody why I wore white to the test. I don't know. I just wanted to look fly. That's it. And that's it. it. So, so Kunle came over. He said, I'm about to throw up. But I'm like, people don't do like this when they about to throw up, right? Just make it. I said. You're not about to throw up. He said, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> I walked close to him. I said, this is me. <laughs> you throw up on this, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> so you ain't going to throw up on my clothes. Right. You ain't you ain't got to vomit. <laughs> I said, get over there with everybody. Uh, Stop that. When you about he to vomit, right you get, get slow. You don't get slow. Right. I'm, I'm just like this. Now, now yeah, if he had been like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm about to throw up. I'd have been way back, <laughs> back from him. He said, I'm, I'm about, so I said, you're acting. You're acting, dude. But this is the same brother. Now that's the one who got on follow. Yeah, but it's the same brother. I, we're running three miles around this big building, right? And I'm 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 doing cadence. I look back. I'm counting everybody, seeing how everybody doing, make sure anybody can pass out. I said, "Where come on, lady. I said, "Let's go, pick it up." I said, "He around here somewhere." We run around the side of the building. He off in the cut on the stairs, drinking a huggy. Huggy is these little. Little Lord, drinks mercy, and eating, thing. eating, and eating the goddamn honey bun. Ew. I said, "What you doing? Get here, huh? Get up! You put that shit in the bag. Put that job in his pocket. <laughs> Running it. I just need a boost. A boost from that. That's it. Hey, that's gonna do it for the next 20, 30 minutes. Girl. I ain't gonna pray. <laughs> All oh, that sugar. I would have ate a piece of that honey bun if I would have seen him. I would eat honey buns. Give me a piece of honey bun. He's out here. So yeah, he. he I said he is tripping, right? So somebody said that my mother can be a horrible, annoying, serious bummer, boomer, uh, snob, strong stances against any drugs. Well, my dad slipped some shrooms and some <laughs> shrooms. <drinking. laughs> Where's it? Oh, hell no. Oh, your dad was earlier, cold. But then your dad was colder than a mofo. I would, I would. Who's this now? This was V. I can't even pronounce Ola. that. V. Ola. The tear. My mother can be a horribly annoying, serious boomer, snob, mm -hmm. st strong stances against any drugs. Well, my dad slipped. Am I a boomer? <laughs> I think I'm a boomer. I'm not a snob or I don't have strong stances against drugs. are a little bit older. Really? I think I'm like 16. Well, my dad slipped some shrooms in something she was drinking. I think he suspected her of infidelity. Ha! <laughs> well, he thought she was going to tell. Here, yeah, I've been mm -hmm. out with. I do it's the last two months. Like so, you don't like my music say rich people love cocaine because you feel like you're a king of the world. I, I want to tell you, poor people love cocaine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's yeah. exactly why the poor people love and it real too. poor people they, they they learned to make poor cocaine called crack. Right. Well that they mean, didn't learn to make it, but they make you feel real great. Yeah, right. And you exactly. really feel like king. Right. Just a lot shorter. People, you so. feel like kingdom come. <laughs> See you in when you do cocaine. I know a dude did exactly. cocaine and That's he said true. he said it made him feel like he had an orgasm. He knew he couldn't do that again. Oh my god, yeah, I'd have never did that again. He That's said because he's like, I, I'm gonna be addicted to this. Hell yeah. I, I can have an without doing work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm telling you this way. So he said, I can't I can't mess with this. I said, That is scary to me. Yeah, that scary. Scary because that will make 
I said that's probably why Muzz would do crack instead of eating. Yeah, I can only imagine if my penis don't work and I get as I get if I'm about 80, it, I'm gonna hit some cocaine. Hey, shit, tomorrow. <laughs> 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 oh my god. And my penis works though. I just had a baby, so you don't well, like, my wife just had a baby, but you don't like pregnant. my music says in the movie industry the 80s craft services were responsible. Yep, they were responsible for providing the drugs to the crew and the talent. That's now, what I mean, I saw something similar, they would spit blood. Oh, 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 oh. Doing what? Drug? It must be cocaine. I've you know, never seen nobody. Maybe he's talking about weightlifting. No, he's, talking, he's responding to James. James is uh, spit blood. He's talking about. See, y'all scam me. I, I started lifting heavy at the gym Monday. Y'all scam me now. I don't be spitting blood. That heavy. I don't think we, we we gotta be talking about like extreme. Yeah, it's gotta be. Cause I'm like, damn. Yeah, that's I've never. Crazy bleeding like that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. Uh, for $5 rock, you can get the same buzz as $20 powder. Right, that's why uh, crack is so popular. Exactly. Well, was. You don't really see too many people doing crack nowadays. I saw the bench contest. They wear braces, a big thing on their chest, and arm plate. Arm plate? What you mean? I've never spit blood. James never. James lived heavy. Okay. Uh, he's big dude, so you know he's a heavy. But uh, hmm. I've never spit blood. That 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 because that's scared. Something's probably wrong with that person. If you spitting blood, something wrong. Ain't no reason you should be spitting blood. It's never a reason. Or spitting, pissing blood. Uh, oh, that's definitely well. A part of an organization. And we're, we're gonna get to it. Let me say this. Part of an organization. That organization was trying to be tough. They know what they were doing. So they have it. All the brothers come up. And they would hit him in the stomach with a bike chain. I mean, not bike chain, tire chain. You know, big chain, truck chain, whatever the fuck it's called, that big chain. Mm -hmm. They would big heavy, hit people in the stomach. Well, damn. Well, that's okay if, you know, if, if first of all, if you have a stomach condition, if it's not, you're really going to get jacked up and get hit in the liver. But it, it was wrapping around. I said, excuse me. So I spoke against it. You know, that, that's wrapping around. It's hitting people in the... In the Kidneys. Mm. Oh, bro, you just scared. I was new, man, but I've always been vocal. So I said, well, I'm not scared of it. They said, well, come up. So, boy, they hit me. That's cool. I'm getting hit there. That's cool. I'm, I'm conditioned. I was fighting conditioned, too. But that shit wrapped around one time and shit my fucking kidney. And so I played. I said, see, I'm not scared of it. I walked off. I said, man, my back is hurting bad. They fucked me up. So not on purpose, but they know they were doing. Ignorance can get you killed too. That night, I got in the bathtub and I looked down the bathtub. Just I, I'm not peeing, and I'm, it's just leaking out blood, leaking out of my penis. Spill the blood, they fucked me up. I went then to the leader of that organization, went to that leader's house, and told him and that chain shit disappeared. Yeah, man. Because. I'm like, I so, I know it's not just me. Yeah. I'm sure there's other brothers at home doing the same thing. Yeah, the same. And you're not pissing it out. It's just coming out. I mean, I'm fucked up. Hell yeah, yeah. But gotta be scared eventually, it, I guess it just healed itself. I never went to the doctor or nothing. That's all it was. You it know, was just internal bruising. Yeah, but it's fucked up, man. I, and once again, I've always had this thing. I said, if I, if I pee again tomorrow, <laughs> I'm going to kill you, bro. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Someone got to die. I, I was on the IV leaking. <laughs> I think they tried to kill me uh, in the military. I decided to get out the military, so I started doing things. Mm -hmm. And so they tested me. This test is physical. This doesn't make no sense. Okay. I'm in the, they're doing a CAT scan with the uh, guy. Mm -hmm. So they got the guy in there and they got, you know, the, you know, the IV thing sticking out y'all. But they had a loosened the thing. So blood is coming out of that. I said, man, it feels cold in here. And I'm wet. <laughs> they get me out the thing. It's, it's and I look down, it's blood everywhere, right? I'm bleeding there. Yeah, it's cold. So, it's cold yeah. I'm bleeding there. So they said, uh, well, we're going to get you some Coke uh, Sprite. We're going to give you some cookies. We'll give you unhealthy. See, I'm sure there's other shit they can get. And they had me drink this drink, I guess, glucose or whatever. Mm -hmm. They said, you just lay there. And so it's one dude that I said, am I going to die? He said, no, I, I, I don't think so. You don't think so? So right there, I said, now I'm in I'm in the army, mind you. Mm. And they're thinking, wait a minute, 
this dude is the SF. They bring in other Bob <laughs> in the room because they like. Shh. We don't I, I said, "Am I going?" I'm like, "I'm sure." But they, they probably thinking he's SF and he's thinking he may die. He so next thing I know, it's like six people in the room. They're like, "Yeah, we're gonna make sure this dude don't do no killing." I'm like, "I'm gonna kill all six of you. <laughs> I'm gonna kill all." So the doctor says, "You're not gonna die. So you're just gonna feel weak, this and that. Even if I was gonna die, he was smart. Don't tell this man you don't know." Yeah, you tell me. You tell I'm me like, you okay me. now, because I'm not going by myself. But I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't saying, I said, okay, okay. And I, I'm nodding like, okay, well, I could just lower down my my desire to kill these mugs. But <laughs> so my whole thing is I'm not dying by myself. I still feel like that. So if you say we're going to go on a death ride, you're going to commit suicide, well, I'm going to kill you first. <laughs> so we ain't, I ain't going by myself if you're going to crash the car or some shit on purpose. Yeah. He said uh, his son got hit in the kidney soon after blood in the urine. Yep. Where? Who said this? Uh, it's, but, uh, his son got My hit. son got hit. Whoa. Whoa. I forgot Whoa. you got that fancy. Show this. Show it. Oh, shit. You can't see now. Oh, uh, no. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, my son got hit in the kidney soon after blood in the urine. Yeah. Arnold says the I you don't like my music. Arnold says the iron rush from lifting weights is better than coming in a woman. But we ain't gonna discuss that long, but I would disagree. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> a man that's had I nine know. children. I've lifted weights, I've got nine children. <laughs> the process of making those nine children was always better than living them goddamn weights. So Arnold as you can see, he ain't get that big of <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Arnold, <laughs> Arnold is a different breed too. Yes, I mean, is. goddamn, that he was a huge in this high heyday. Of course, you know that some of them steroids too, but that's also hard work. Because if I do steroids right now and I'm just sitting chilling at home, I'm not gonna get Arnold big. It ain't gonna right. happen. So you still had to work. You know what I mean? You know, I met him when I was 18, and he told me that I could be his size. Do you know that? Do you know what that could have done to my mind? I almost went crazy. When he said that, hey, my mother would always talk, I said, Mom, when am I gonna get bigger? My father's big, right? When am I gonna get like daddy? She said, Oh, I started asking when I was about nine. When you're 10, when mm -hmm. I'm 10, I, when am I gonna get big like that? When you're 11, <laughs> and then it just when by the time I'm 12, I said, When am I gonna gain some weight? <laughs> she said, oh, When you're 13, you're gonna gain some weight. Oh, I'm funny. like, So finally, no, finally, I turned thick. I was tall, but I was skinny. I started, finally, I was 13. I gained weight. I, I ended up going up to probably uh, 108 pounds. <laughs> and then by the time I was in high school, I was 115 pounds. Damn. So you couldn't tell me, you can tell me nothing. I was ripped up though. And uh, I remember one time my father said, You can't help but be ripped up. Ain't shit there. You can't help but be ripped. <laughs> so then when I went to the army, I was 129 pounds. When I got out, mm. When I got out though, whoo, I was 135 pounds on that ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, then, that's crazy. Then later on in life, you know, I get married and everything. My wife feed me well. I get to 165 pounds. Mm -hmm. Well, had the stroke. I went up to 225 pounds and hated it. Couldn't even tie my own damn shoes. That's well, I could, that's interesting because I can lift my normally I would lift my foot and tie my shoe just just to you know just to be training myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying. I tried that shit. My shoes grew, just dropped. So then I tried to bend over and tie. I couldn't breathe. Damn. So I said, "This is too much." So stop working out again. Got down to 215 pounds. By the time we started this show, I was at 205. Okay, now I'm at. 165 again, paid it. I told him. <laughs> so I said, I want to get to 180. He said, well, You don't need, you know, 10 pounds is enough. Bob, I don't know the difference between 10 and 5. I said, Well, it's only five pound difference. He said, Five pounds makes a difference. So now I've uh, resigned myself to going up to 170, 175 pounds. And this is for y'all um, because we get caught, it's easy to get caught into these numbers. You know what I'm saying? And you start thinking about um, inches, you know, your your waist, how you feel, 
which is the most important thing. And muscle mass versus right, right, right. We just see that weight and we like, yo, I want to be this is what I want. This now, I want. me and the wife walked you know, a mile an hour back, uh, yes, day before yesterday, and um, she said, Man, babe, you're doing better than me, you know. Mm. I said, Well, at the end, about you know, half mile, quarter mile, or something like that. You, you ran the whole thing. She said, "Yeah, but I'm looking. You're not. You you pushing the baby. You're not uphill and everything. You're not breathing heavy." I said, "Well, I never breathe heavy." She was like, "She, <laughs> yeah, maybe you don't notice it." You but after she said, "You be," <sighs> I said, "I ain't doing all that." <laughs> she got me <laughs> sucking in and says, "I ain't doing all that shit." But. uh I said, well, maybe I'll breathe in heavy and I realized, but she said, you weren't breathing heavy at all. Mm. Yeah. And I know how we were walking fast because my legs were noodly, you know, when you just pushing hard. Right. I said, my legs felt like noodles going up them hill, up the hill fast and stuff. And I said, the whole time I wasn't paying attention, I'm talking to the baby. I'm entertaining her as I'm pushing her uphill. Mm. And uh, losing weight makes a difference. That's my, my point. I, when I was heavier, I'm, I'm moving more weight. Yes, so it makes do. a difference. So for me now, I just want to get cut up. Now, my son's back in town. My wife picked him up from the airport last night. Who's she that tells day? him, she tells him, but he's the one that dropped me off here. She tells him, Daddy, you know, uh, we're 140 now. <laughs> and he's, he said, and she said that he just stopped, stopped. He started doing the prep of me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why would you tell that boy that? He like, man, I weigh 145. Dad, Daddy weighed less than me. I said, why you do that? Man, you know he ain't doing no damn <laughs> I said, your mama cold to do that to you know. He said, I started doing the prep for you. you I said, damn, well, I'm glad you did the prep for me because I would have needed it. You don't like my music, said you learned how to fight because MF was thought they could F with you. He said that because you was talking about your weight because he was like, Oh, me? No, he learned uh, no, it I, he was four years old. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I need to grow up with it. Being slim is just it's the reason why he probably got into it with more people versus he was right. bigger. People wouldn't have tried him. But I can imagine him being you being that small and then tall and and slim like that. Motherfuckers, you in Chicago? What? I had, they had 26 to 27 inch waist. Yeah, I was a 28 inch waist. So I know what you was. And I, I didn't change until <laughs> I got like 14, 15. That was like a 32. No, no I, I had 27 inch waist. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was 30. I, I know in Chicago they judge me, but even like here in the country, like you just you 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 like that. People go, I was slim. They gonna try you. They gonna <laughs> try you. You got the show. Like you, like like Pop said, you know, you're in the city where the skinny niggas die. Like that's every city. Every city is the city where the skinny niggas die. So you got the show, motherfuckers, when you slim. Yeah. I even mm -hmm. I developed a complex. You know, when I came to Atlanta, I had to. Go through a whole course about dealing with. Uh, when I went to folks. jail, so many people, well, I say not so many, few people wanted to box me. They learned quickly, don't box that. Much. <laughs> but I was, because I was skinny. One dude in there, they called him, they called him boxer or something like, because he was a, a boxer. Mm -hmm. He was a championship boxer where he got locked, a golden glove boxer where he got locked up. Okay. And so with him, I was just talking, he said, you know, why do you get a room? Before the rest of us, so they had moved me. My my cellies had moved me in the room. So mother, they probably gonna take advantage of them. I said that that's not happening to me. Mm -hmm. You come in that cell, and both of them would be mm -hmm. under their blankets forever. I said that's not happening. So he said, well, what, what what is it? So one of my cellies, Valentine, he said, this dude got hands so much. So I respect him, and so we wanted him in the room with us. The pie boss, Mark, and Valentine, both of them, Valentine was huge, right? We want him in, in, in there with us. He said, he, and so the dude said, I was next, the boxer. Said, well, look, we're going to do this. So they gave him a rack of cookies. They gave him, you know, what do you want? They gave him some other stuff. And so people really said, they paid for him. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, did they pay for me? I'm going to have to kill these dudes. <laughs> but that's not what happened, right? They really wanted people in, with hands with them. So we just yeah. took the pie. That's what it they couldn't do the pie couldn't do shit with us, right? So after that, the way I dealt with that dude, he was they call him dread. Dread, dread not, not boxer, but he was a golden glove champion. He was throwing 
throwing at me. He said, you know, I heard you got hands. He thought, you know, doing the, so what do you what do you do with this? So I'm just slipping. I said, oh, well, just you know, slip off. I'm coming. Normally, you know, we don't slip all the way across these punches. But to me, his punches look like this. <laughs> so I'm all, I said, you know, and, and I'm close to him. I, I keep slipping his punches. He, he punches low. I cover that jive. And I'm stepping closer to him, close to him. I'm, I'm in his face. He said, that's why I'm in the room with him. He said, God, man, okay. And he got me up. We never had problems again. Your partner, C. Flux, scene said, my waist may have never seen 26 inches. <laughs> Who said that? Baby. C. Flux, scene said that. Oh, see, Flux in there? Uh, ah, my waist may have never seen. So when he was like goddamn 10, you know, his job. Hey, man, I, I wish I had seen. Now, somebody said strongman competition, right? Um, they definitely wasn't talking about me. No, I wasn't in no. Now, I, I, and I won't even lie and say I was skinny but strong for my size. I was average mm. as far as strength. Yeah, I was. I was. I was a great fighter, but never just a strong. Even now, we were uh, a sister. Somebody was moving. This is even now. This is terrible the way they do it. <laughs> I said, "Well, y'all come get me so I can help move." Belay says to me, <laughs> Why "He says, me? well." You being there is, is a deficit. I did not. You say did that. say that. I said what? I said, man, y'all cold. You said about yourself. I didn't say you that. said that about me. I said what? I said I'm a deficit. Like yeah. I said, so we could be living less if I come. They said, well, if I had to be lifting you up off the floor. Mama said, Mama said that about himself. I did, did not. I did, if I laugh, see, I laugh, and I then I have to become me saying it because I laugh. <laughs> No, he said that about me like I'm a deficit or something. I said it wrong. No. I started he, said, he said I'm a deficit. I said y'all cold, y'all cold. All right, let's get to it. I might mess with you. It was him. I just woke up. They're like, nah, you can stay home. Bye bye. You enjoy yourself. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> but this is a good one. Somebody said this, and I thought this was good. Uh, Gym master of uh, black basketball. Gym master is black basketball tournament. If you find yourself snoring while you're awake, and I have done this, it's time to do something about it. Also, a lot of black men are dying from undiagnosed uh, sleep apnea leading to strokes. Yeah. Get a sleep study. This is true. I had to learn. But how to also, study. men who are too thin also have sleep apnea. Yep. Just know that, y'all, because I had sleep apnea uh, when I was really, really thin. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, so, yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing. You know, snow, heavy breathing um, smokers. Or people that just um, don't practice deep breathing. I used to do that. What about folks who, I'd imagine the same, uh, when they're, they're heavy and they, <laughs> like when they're talking. That's the same thing. That's the same thing. That's really bad for you because you're not breathing deep. That's why you're doing that. That's that shallow breathing. And I used to catch myself watching TV doing that kind of shit. Like, now, I, I, I caught myself writing and I hold my breath. Myself do that too, but not sure. writing. I'll be doing something intense, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It could be anything, reading, translate, and and then I realize, oh shit, yeah. what the fuck am I doing? That's big too. So yeah, breathing essential, deep breaths. Learn how to do. We did the warrior's breath. Yes, and we did a whole episode on breathing. Go to that episode. That's really important. It starts with the breath. Yeah, so. all of it. <laughs> okay. There are parallels between martial arts and mathematics. Uh, misguided public perception of both disciplines. Uh, that's that's one thing they have in common, right? Mm -hmm. Students' misconceptions and the similarities between proofs, drills, and katas are among the striking commonalities between martial arts and mathematics. Uh, and if you didn't know that there are misconceptions about math, yeah, one that is difficult. Using difficult math means you have a poor teacher. Also, um, when I was growing up, they told women, girls, that uh, math was hard for girls. Right. I don't know, did, did you hear that? Really? Yeah. yeah they, 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 so that was something that they taught women. It's hard, but, but like that's just sounds insane. It's we all are math, but well, anyway. Yeah, it wasn't hard for me, but yeah. And they <laughs> would tell people that in yeah, calculus, right? Right now, she's excelling. In elementary and high school, math was one of my top five sub subjects. So 
in my my uh, in high school uh, was a school for the so-called gifted, and, um, and I, I don't, don't want to use because people were were gifted, um, and I get embarrassed sometimes when I talk about my school because there are people in my class that are still, I mean, a large number, still extremely close. Like even back then, I mean, mm -hmm. like damn. And if, like me, well, you met one of my classmates when uh, we talked doing the radio show with me, mm -hmm. Maurice. But if I walked in now and hadn't, I, you know, uh, they, they're on Facebook with me and stuff, we've had interaction. But if no interaction and they, oh, class 85, they come right in. Mm -hmm. So that is also nothing that's exceptional about that school. That it's like that, right? I'm, it, that had, I also went to a school, like high school and elementary school for the gifted. It was the same program, and it's the same way. Yeah, like, some about a that. A lot of a lot of the people are still really close. Uh, they still have like gatherings, you know. Yeah, um, I think Rock and Me and stuff, stuff like is that. like that too. I mean, they still have what? What is Rock and Me? Is like do they have they? That's something they developed later on. They have Rock and Me in your school. Rock music is like for black kids that's like a B average or higher. Really? Yeah, those people. See, I don't know what it is about that. But, of shit of group. And so, <laughs> uh, my my yeah, favorite subjects in school, uh, in order: number one was English, particularly composition. Number two was math, particularly geometry and calculus. Mm -hmm. Number three was world history. I hated American history. Mm -hmm. It just seems so full of propaganda. But I love world history. Number four was physics. Right. And number five was anatomy and physiology. Three now, for a lot of that, too, was dealing with my association with the martial arts and that subject. Okay. Um, in college, the only math I took in college was statistics, which I hated. Mm -hmm. uh, simply because, one, this is going to sound, it's, it's, it's not ethnicist or nationalist or however you would say it definitely not racist because my teacher was Igbo okay he had a heavy accent so one you could barely understand what he was saying in English number two the room was small as hell like somebody's bedroom but it had the acoustics of a goddamn gymnasium oh god so I you couldn't so it, it was so bad, everybody knew, like, man, I don't know shit what the fuck you talking about. So we were all getting D's in the class. Now, I'm good at math. I couldn't, I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I'm basically trying to teach myself, and statistics is not an easy subject. That's one of the more difficult maps. So I say, in protest, I bought in a bunch of pillows and gave to everybody. I said, why are you talking, man? We might as well take a nap. So he's teaching, everybody's just laying on, and I hear him stop. Everybody really not sleep, but right, right, right. I hear him stop. I said, yeah, it affected him. He go, you know, what's going on? Then we could talk about we need better, you know, uh, you need to emote better or something. And then he said, um, everybody keep it. I looked up, everybody continue. We all got, everybody, he, well, he said, who, whose idea was this? This is brilliant. I, Everybody look, I said, mine, you know, okay, go ahead, continue. Everybody in the class got Fs, but me, he gave me a D. So everybody pissed at me. <laughs> That's funny for following this motherfucker. He, right. He good. He, <laughs> he, for being so brilliant with that, I'm going to give him a D. But the rest of y'all fail. They were pissed. Ooh, and at like Howard, like you fell, you, you know, you fell, you got to redo that shit. I'm mm. you know, like, you ain't graduating. And I'm like, man, this ain't my my major and shit. That was one of the big things that that pushed me to leave Howard and come back to Chicago and go to Columbia, which I was, I, I didn't want to major in finance anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister convinced me to do that. I wanted to major in creative writing, so I went to I left there, went to Columbia, majoring in film with the concentration in in, in screenwriting. Okay, so but so those were my favorites: English, particularly composition, math. Geometry and calculus, world history, physics, anatomy, and physiology. And, uh, and like I said, statistics was the only one. And even when I talked to a mathematician, like in Bobolan, he was like, yeah, he didn't like statistics. And that was the most difficult of the maps that he took. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I think we're good. Um, I all I was always taught that we are math, and as serious martial artists, we must fully understand this if we want to teach it. I just want to say real quick, man. I don't um I don't y'all probably understand. I, I just want to just uh, emphasize how important teachers are. You know, having a good teacher, how important it is. I remember um, in high school, ninth, I was the first ninth grade that was moved to high school in my um, state. It was mm. the first time they, the, the year that they moved, the ninth, took ninth grade from junior high and created middle school. I was the ninth grade class. We were the first freshman at, um, the first year I had elementary, then it went right to, into high school. Well, it went from elementary to middle school. We, I'm talking about at first. Well, oh, no. Middle school. No, it, it was junior high. It went, yeah, it went from elementary to junior high to, to high school. Okay, yeah, we never had, we had like one junior high, two junior highs in the city. They were experiments, right? So for us, it went elementary school, went to eighth grade, and then you went right to high school. Mm, and see, and that's pretty much what they was trying to do, but they uh -huh. ended up with a middle school. But so anyway, um, when I got to high school, ninth grade was the first time I got introduced to black nationalism mm -hmm. and knowledge of self and history and the, the, the Caucasus Mountains. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You start reading the cat, rat, and the dog and all this stuff. <laughs> and so I do not. I'm in Wilmington, which is 80 percent white folks. You know, you got country white folks and then you got the beach white folks. So you got the rednecks, then you got daddy's money. And I've only had, I've only seen like three black teachers in my life. From wow. elementary to high school, I only saw three black teachers besides coaches. Mm -hmm. I don't count coaches. Mm -hmm. So I only saw three black teachers. I didn't, I, did, I, I was on my, the black, the white man is the devil, like mm. type shit. I was on that at 15. I'm getting all this information. Dr. York was big back then, so I'm reading all these books. So anyway, I did not, I just didn't care. I got, I, I didn't, I didn't fail. I didn't do any homework. I got all incompletes and I just passed all the tests. I never tried, but I got all D's because I knew I couldn't fail. Mm. And every teacher knew I was smarter than that. But this one teacher, this white lady, and I did not like her. <laughs> but she taught so well her she was science was her thing and she taught so well that she, she refused to make you like you either going to have to say I'm stupid or I can't do it or something like that like out loud for her to get off of you you know what I'm saying like she's going to be on your back and I end up making like a 99 for the year and a perfect score because of her being that type of teacher it's like look you're going to either you either going to get suspended or you got my class. I'm not going to let you talk. I'm not going to let you play. You got to do this work, turn it in, or you get not my class. And she made me do it. And so teachers are just important. So I just wanted to just, for all those teachers, I know a few people that are teaching and they are very stressed during this time of the year. I just met a person that's teaching for the first time and I'm sharing stuff from class with her. And she is saying, um, she's like taking notes. Like, oh, I'm going to use that. I was like, you know, Bob would do this. So if you don't know something, don't say, oh, take, take that saying. Mm -hmm. And she felt, you know, before first day, she felt like she had more in her arsenal. So I felt really good, you know, to do that. And it just, it's just important, man, because especially these days, teacher can make all the difference. So right. at first glance, it may seem that mathematics and martial arts are conceptually far apart. However, this isn't the case. The first thing to understand is that both disciplines are difficult yet creative human activities. Martial arts are more than just kicks, punches, and throws. And mathematics is uh, not merely a collection of rules, facts, skills, and algorithms. When performed by a skilled practitioner, both are art forms that teach us ways of learning and framework of thinking that better enables us to use our bodies and minds by maximizing their efficiency. You cannot achieve a high level of skill in mathematics or martial arts by following and executing a collection of rules, facts, and techniques. On the contrary, they are arts of exploration, discovery, imagination, and creation. 
The practitioner enjoys the excitement of searching for new results and techniques and thrill of discovery, the satisfaction of mastering difficulties and the pride of achieving mastery. This is, I can't say about math, but in martial arts is true. <laughs> Uh, it may come as a surprise that learning martial arts requires as much use of the brain as the body. The words Ile, Yoruba, Dojo, Japanese, Dojang, Korean, and Kun, Chinese, mean the place of enlightenment. It is, excuse me, the Ile is a place for facing your fears, your weaknesses, and for cultivating a flexible mind and body through hard practice. Both martial arts and mathematics are intersections of art, practical skills, and high ideals that provide a structure to develop an awareness of life through a process of discovery. Mathematics and martial arts have a fundamental thing in common. In order to master either one, the practitioner must become skilled at both the mechanical side and the creative side. It is possible to perform both mathematics and martial arts using strict rules of deduction and a system of axioms or techniques where all the theorems or moves are then obtained and checked mechanically. However, if you watch a martial arts competition, you will witness a messy struggle punctuated only occasionally by a sequence of defensive and offensive techniques in a continuous flow. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to the Zen Master Black Basketball Channel and say that I can honestly say that learning to work in IT was hell because everyone is Indian and difficult to understand for two years. I had to I had to take a course where it was Indian um, was an Indian uh, teacher, and I could not. I had to literally just say, you know, I'm just gonna drop out. It's just taking too much. It's too stressful to try to understand what you're saying, and then I got to figure out, okay, now what does this mean? I can do it. So my hat off to you. Uh, one hard. thing I, I think that um, would benefit our children is, since we're talking about teachers and also about the difficulty of understanding accents, is making sure that when they're at a younger age, that they're taking languages that they don't speak I knew you and, that they, and that they're learning those languages from native speakers. Because I actually have... I um, had a job where I uh, was on the phone with people and I actually had a talent at understanding people who spoke, who didn't speak English, you know, mm. as their native language and had very heavy accents to the point that they would call and ask for me because they had such a hard time being able to communicate with the other people who worked there. And I think that comes from the fact that I took languages when I was young from native speakers. Mm -hmm. So I was able to understand, you know, what they were saying. I, I don't have any problem understanding Indian people when I get them on like customer service, any of that stuff. I think that's, so, I, I can agree because the same thing, I don't have a problem either. Yeah. I can understand that teaching. I can understand Jamaican accents. But there, there was uh, environmental uh, factors. That Caribbean and island accents, I can understand real good, but I think it's because I listened to the music as a kid. Oh. Now, I'll, I'll say, yeah. So just being uh, open, I mean, experiencing different. But when you get around, music. now you get around two Jamaicans speaking that part. It's totally together. different. Yeah. It's totally like, different. What are they what the hell? I just saw that yesterday. I'm, just, I'm sorry, that's amazing, Bob. I just, I didn't know that. Till yesterday, I was this dude was talking, and I'm following him. He's talking to a regular dude, mm -hmm. a, a regular dude. He's talking to a, very, a black dude, uh, and he's talking about it. And I understand everything he's saying to do, but I'm saying to myself, he sounds really. He had a. It was thick though, mm -hmm. but I understand. I was like, man, it's, it's thick, but I understand. And then a, a a woman came, and they started talking to each other, and I'm not joking. Soon as the other person came, I didn't understand. Yeah. Not one. Word that's never happened to me. People have people call me and be like, Yo, what's in this song? And I'm like, Oh, the school bell, something, something. I can break the whole song down. I couldn't, I could not, I listened back three times, couldn't get one word. I remember it was amazing. That, there was this rapper in Chicago, um, and he did this hip house song, uh, rap mixed with house, and it came real popular, right? And I, I knew him, so we were both at this place where we were both. Form. 
Afterwards, this Jamaican dude comes up. You know, how you doing, brother? But his accent heavy. And I knew what he was saying then. And he said, Are you really Jamaican to this brother? Who I won't name. But you all probably heard him a little bit. And the brother said, Yes. You know, I'm really Jamaican, but because he speaks perfect English, you wouldn't know. It. I mean, I know they, so. they both speak English, but I mean, white man English straight up. Right. So you wouldn't know. He said, but I, so the dude, I guess, decided to test him. And he started saying, he asked him something, and, and the, the rapper answers back. And I was like, what the hell are they saying? And mm-hmm. they, they ended up having a long conversation. And they were hugging because the dude who was asking him knew he really lived Jamaican. Mm-hmm. He was spitting it like this. He grew up in Jamaica, not like, you know, from New York and then just. Because a lot of New Yorkers have Jamaican roots. Now he and I was like, damn, I said, you're incredible with language because people who don't know you Jamaican wouldn't have a clue. And and it's a, and learning another language too, somebody said on here is good for your brain. Not just good for your brain, yeah. it's actually um it's been proven that people who learn another language like have um is it I don't I can't remember if it's problem solving. Or it's a, a, I know it is problem solving. It's like two areas that automatically excel when you learn another language. Well, also when you learn a, a non-romantic language, the romance language meaning uh, French, Spanish, those are close to English. English is actually Germanic, but mm-hmm. it has a lot of the romance uh, language in there. So if you learn languages. And so the Germanic and the Romance languages think from uh, left to right. Right. But exactly. when you learn Hebrew, Arabic, uh, all that. right, Arabic, Hebrew, uh, Chinese, uh, Yoruba, mm-hmm. they read from right to left. Yes. The world rotates from right to left. Yeah. So your your brain is actually moving more in sync with nature. And when the first. I hate it. First Say country it, books I read, they all read right to left. That was interesting. And I even if you English and they go, shit, uh, look at a manga. If you read manga books, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Japanese books, no, they no. open from the back and awesome. you read them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Casey McIvor said, mm-hmm. I couldn't understand my Scottish in laws for a month straight when I first met them because of their accent. I, I actually worked with someone who was Scottish, and this is before I had the uh, phone job. I was about 19 at the time. I, I worked at a warehouse, and there was one Scottish guy, and he had no friends because nobody understood him except for me. No, I, you know, I'm from <laughs> Scotland myself. He, he his <laughs> wife up there, <laughs> at, uh, and she like bought me lunch, and like I had conversations with them because he was like, "This is my only friend at work." <laughs> he was like, "Because she is the only one who can understand what I'm saying." Yeah, so wow. I, like it was. I'm telling you. Dang. See me if, if it was me and that was my friend, I'd have bought him a, a toast cap, like pal cap. <laughs> Uh, you know, the page cap, I'd have bought him a, a suit jacket. Oh, my God. Flip the collar up, and then he walking. So, you know, that, that's how that's how the Scottish be dressing and, and walking his eye. Hold on. Hold the on. Irish, too. That's how he walk. Jadarion, I don't appreciate this. He said, he said, it was the same for me when I first visited Atlanta from up north. <laughs> hold on. What you trying to say, Sean? Hold on, cuz. What you trying to say, Sean? You came out here from up north. That's, that's, that's cool. true. Yeah, that, a young brother wanted to have a conversation with me. I had a book. He said, uh, what, what, what book you read, Sha? I said, so and so, so and so book. He said, uh, you know, what's chop? What chop? <laughs> you know, I said, I, 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 I'm not, it's not about a, a person with a, a, a chopper. <laughs> no, 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 Ride no chop. I ride no road no chopper since I moved down here. I'm getting upset and shit. He said, no, no, chopper. And so a brother walks up, said, he's asking you what chapter are you on? I said, oh, I, I thought you were talking about am I on a chopper? Like on a motorcycle. Yeah, it could be it, it can get kind of strange so when he dies. Now, now my know. my wife, you are if you watch after spiritual resistance, you, and you should, mm-hmm. you can hear she doesn't, you can understand what she's saying. From what time? Now, now one of her, 
after spiritual resistance, 6 p.m. on Sunday. All right. 6 p.m. Eastern time. But she has a sister. You'd be like, are they from the same house? Oh, oh yeah, you go, you go see at the store, you go to the store. Man, is, now, I can understand her, but Some it's people heavy lean into it right, a right. Bit more. You know, I mean, that's really the thing. Some people lean into right. it a little bit more. If, some, if you have up north ties, because I grew up here, but my family is from Chicago. You know, so like they didn't allow us. <laughs> see, to do all see of a beautiful that woman walk, walk up and say, "Hey, Miss, um, you know, time she said, yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> what you talking about, shop? <laughs> what you talking about, shop? Yeah. Now, when I first got oh, my yeah. wife, she would say, "Uh, what time it is?" I said, "What time it is? <laughs> what time is it?" And she was like, "That's what I said." And I'm like, "You said what time it is?" <laughs> she said, "Yeah." I said, I said, what time is it? She said, yeah. She said, to them, it's the same. same <laughs> right. I'm mean, the same thing, you know. So, but now she'll say, what time is it? She doesn't say what time it is. But she'll say, let me take you a bath. <laughs> I said, give to, to, to the church, to, to, to the babies, right? She say to my son, he's a baby. Let me take you a bath. I said, give him a bath. She said, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna, get, I'm, I'm gonna take him a bath. I said, give him a bath. You just drive me nuts. You got a ladder dialect, so, then you got hood a ladder dialect. Hood, right. Which is totally different. So you have and then you then you have Buckhead Atlanta dialect. Mm-hmm. Hey, money is money, 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 mm-hmm. money, money, capitalism money. <laughs> that's, that's the language they speak. All right, so achieving the beauty and flow of the martial arts takes more than simply following a series of predetermined steps. This same idea applies to mathematics. The mathematician at work makes vague guesses, visualizes broad generalizations, and jumps to unwarranted conclusions. They arrange and rearrange their ideas, and they become convinced of their truth long before they can write down a logical proof. Proof. While solidly built on ancient traditions, countless practitioners have further developed both disciplines by devising and polishing techniques concepts and ideas with every generation martial arts and mathematics evolve through accumulated knowledge techniques concepts perceptions and experiences built upon by past practitioners the concepts and techniques continue to change over time not only are new concepts and techniques developed but are but at the same time old concepts and techniques are reworked modified and redefined the practitioner, therefore, can only gain a proper understanding of martial arts or mathematics through constant practice or study that is not limited to a technical perspective, but also includes a historical and cultural perspective. Yeah, well, okay. uh, so when you're doing math, there's a cultural element to that, too, and to how math is presented, how it's used. Have you heard of Ishango Bone? That's... The first calculator. He was talking about that. Yeah, to do a project. Um, one of my students, Aku, is an engineer. He taught his students. He was teaching at an elementary school where he moved. He's living in Rwanda now. He's teaching at the university. There. But he was teaching them to make an Ishango Oh, wow. I said, man, see, I wish I had that kind of teaching. It when I, like you said, That's teaching true. is important. I wish I had that shit when I was in school. <laughs> Martial arts, to me, that's gifted teaching. Yeah, right. Yeah. Martial arts and mathematics offer many challenges, both external and internal. The difficulty of certain movements, the complexity of the concepts, exhaustion resulting from rigorous practice and study, and the pain of sore muscles or headache. And produce a great deal of frustration and discouragement. So you get you get pain of sore muscles and headache from training, especially if you're mm-hmm. trying to get a technique that that's been evading you, right? Yes. <laughs> Mathematics can give you headache part. I don't know about the sore muscles. Right, right. Maybe your fingers and all that. Right. Yeah. Now, but I want to say that even though she gets sore muscles and see, headache, the brain's the brain is not a muscle. I think we dealt with that in one of the episodes here too. The brain is absolutely not a muscle, y'all. No, it's not. And one, one person wrote me, I, I, I put it on my Facebook. They said, Well, I feel it is. You can feel it. Because, right, <laughs> he jumped in and said, You can feel whatever the hell you want. I'm like, Glad he dealt with it. I didn't have to say nothing. Yeah. 
He no. said, what you feel, partner, don't mean shit. No. It's the reality. And you could talk, even from no. a physical standpoint, brain tissue, muscle tissue. It's an, and it's an organ, number one. Yeah. But, the, but one clear thing, one simple way that you know it's not a muscle. No muscle is encased in bone. Muscles outside of bone because muscles job is to move the skeleton. That's the job of the muscle. But the brain is inside the skeleton. Like your heart is inside your real cage. Right. Those are organs. They're not muscles. Stop it. Okay, so now, anyway, the journey for each individual, and since we're dealing with math, that, that, that's a, a mathematic equation. If if your brain's a muscle, then, if then, then you are not a human. All right, so... <laughs> The, uh, not you're not even from this planet. The journey for each individual is unique. A master or a teacher can illuminate principles. Be, uh, unless you're insane. A master or a teacher can illuminate principles behind techniques and concepts, but you must discover the truth for yourself. I say it again. A master or a teacher can illuminate principles behind techniques and concepts, but you must discover the truth for yourself. If that teacher is discovering the truth for you. You will get out of that what my beloved grandson, who is about to get his black belt soon, <laughs> is doing. You'll see him in a commercial. My my daughter said, oh, snap. You know, master, uh, I won't say his name because I don't want to embarrass him. But I will. Uh, we call him Chunk. I've talked about him before. His name is Emmanuel Marcellus Grimes II. Okay. Uh, she said, you know, master, Emmanuel Marcellus Grimes, and, I, and I, I put a laugh up there. I said, I love the babies. <laughs> because he is, oh, you see him doing, I said, I want to whoop this teacher's ass <laughs> for teaching my baby like that and those other babies. Uh, but, you know, and my wife said, well, you know, she goes, oh, you're going to have him. Right. I said, yeah, but I got to slickly do it because I don't want to just dismantle what he's learned what he's learned well they'll see Yo, we've been but right he gonna see i said around us he gonna see i said but god forbid if somebody else is his age in class and be training for a minute but my my well my my granddaughter tutu sparred with him and my granddaughter ogundi ron she told him both what right mm -hmm. and afterwards she said man y'all need to train with granddad <laughs> yes. so so, you know, as long as family keep handling them, they'll handle them with love and, and, and deal with them. But if, if y'all see the video that my daughter posted, uh, I thought somebody else posted it. I looked, I said, who that? I said, that's Chunk. I just knew by the, that head. We, he got that, that family head. Let me see. <laughs> he got that family head. So I said, that's Chunk. I said, let me, who posted this? I saw, okay, my daughter posted it, right? And it's what I'm talking about. You're not allowing him, you're not giving him the foundation for him to discover technique for himself. You're saying, this is what you do. Right. This is what you do. This is what you do. And it looks, it looks, martial, I laughed. Martial I arts, man, is a great example of effective marketing. It is a it is the one of the best examples you can use to how propaganda has been marketed to us oh, and how we karate. feel victim. Well, karate, taekwondo, mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 mar mar it's marketed so well. In fact, my, my son-in-law says, Pop, I, I, I definitely want him to train with you, but I want him to be confused. Let's wait till he gets to this till this contract is up. You know how long this motherfucker had him uh sign a contract for? Three years. I said, man, you let Locked him lock you in three three year contract. You might need to think about that. Where you, you pay you <laughs> paying like two hundred a month Ooh. for three years. Damn, he getting paid. We got to step it up. <laughs> we got to step it up. <laughs> well, that's the funny. Only way shit. here, that's my son. My son said, Dad, you got to, you know, look at it what it is. You know, I know you don't want to look at it as a business, but you know, step it up a little bit. No, you ain't you ain't well, supposed to do Because of course he's you know he just came he back from working that. for Louis Vuitton. So now, now you and got so to get now your marketing you, game up, get your right, advertising right. game up. What you doing? Right, I'm doing multi million dollar shit, Dad. Right. Because exactly. <laughs> he walked and he said, you know, I said, what's that? Well, this is Shalou Chalet that 
Oh, da, 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 da. I, I said, ooh, I got, wait, I'm gonna have to talk about that. I know his clothing game is impeccable right now. Clothing oh, my goodness. I said, what is this? The, 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 the smell good game? Mm-hmm. He came in with a bag of smell good. My wife, my wife said, well, how much is it? He said, well, everything in the bag there is about $2,000. Ooh, boy, mm-hmm. you better give me some of that. I'm wow. coming for he y'all got, there. He got, a, he got, he got a, a leather bag, you know, yellow. He said, you know, I feel like I can give some of this bag to mom. He got as a gift of doing some kind of stellar work or whatever for them. And I, my daughter looked at it and said, wait a minute, are those coordinates? I said, oh, shit. I said, okay, yeah, I mean, you know, you are smart. You know, you ain't doing shit with the intelligence in school, but you're a brilliant. No, <laughs> so I said, you are brilliant. And I looked at it. <laughs> it's a shock. You are brilliant, actually. So I looked at the coordinates. I said, where are the coordinates to, son? He says, to the headquarters for the place. So, mm. oh shit. I said, I'm just looking at the bag before Yay, we looked and saw the coordinates. It's just a bag that has a little dope little thing on there. So, oh, said, that's you got that bag. That's you got the, that right. Bag. So, I said, wow, man, that's the kind of stuff. So, we can have a bag and it's got, you know, little pictures on it, but it actually gives no. the, 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 it gives the location to our class or something. That'd be dope. I, I'm, and if you get there, you get a month of training free. I met with oh, these, I met with these people. Understand? And they were talking about um i went to this little meeting they're talking about black people getting their stuff together whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. so they want to train and stuff so they were talking about the video today the only video that they knew of black people in martial arts is the one where the man got the kids crying the kid is crying and the man oh, and the kids around the, to be ooh, so let me just tell y'all when i say the power of marketing I told them. I let them talk about that first day because they were talking about how good that was and how strong. And I'm that's so why I ain't saying that. I let them all tell. I said, you know what? You still got me. Yeah, I got it. Oh, it's two thirty. Okay. I'm so sorry, family, especially because I was late, but I gotta get going. So it, 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 it was a nice having you here for ten minutes. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was not was good. <laughs> no, bro, we will see you next Y'all next show. We appreciate absolutely. you. All um, right. But anyway, I was just gonna say, um, they were talking about that part. Is like it's so that's so. Beautiful, what that brother's doing. Like, they're gonna be warriors. They're gonna be. They're gonna be ready. Hold on, excuse me. I'm big. What'd you do with the, uh, my thermos? <laughs> oh, it was right here. It was in your way, so I, I, I think you had moved it out the way. Yeah. I moved it out the way. Okay. To, but, but uh, they were like, these boys are gonna be this. They're they gonna be that. They're gonna be that. So, prime level feels like. Let me tell you something. Just to be honest with y'all. Them boys is gonna get disciplined out of there. Maybe I can't say for sure. They're gonna learn to deal with some of their emotions. They don't learn to take. They don't learn nothing about self defense. No, no. But they learned about you know how to. But even, your even with emotion, stuff. not so. Even with that, you don't have to teach a person to be empathetic by traumatizing them, <laughs> making them cry for the fifteen minutes. Now fuck that, man. <laughs> because if that was my child, my child would be taken out of there. Yeah, people think it's so beautiful. People frustrating a child then tell right, them. frustrating <laughs> them, they're crying. And you think that's beauty that this dude's doing. That dude is he's got issues himself. I've been teaching a long time, y'all. I can see motherfuckers. <laughs> he's got issues himself. I told my wife when I first saw him, my wife said, What do you think of this? I said, oh, man, This is madness. <laughs> this is madness. This is not something say, oh, a lot of Mothers are desperate for men, and this is men for not the mother for mm-hmm. desperate for men to get involved with the training of the boys. Yeah, bro. And we're not doing it. So anybody that looks like they're doing it, right? And they, and then they, we they, get happy. That's why women gave millions of dollars to this motherfucker with a school who never built a school. Y'all know who I'm talking about with a school who never built a school because he talked about doing it for our boys. Sad. Me and Ike and Bobola went to this thing. Um, the, the juvenile detention center was asking for somebody to come in and teach the children martial arts. I was having an issue with the state. You know, I can't have them mothers looking at me. And I've been said the wrong shit. They've been throwing us out there, throwing me in the cell. <laughs> right? I also can't have them do certain checks on me. I certain shit the way I lived at a certain point in my life. No, right? <laughs> so. Um, we're sitting there though, and the parents are the, the sisters. It's all it's one dude who's been there for long. He, he wanted to know way after because he he wanted to be the man. He enjoying this, 
and if I'm talking about what needs to happen for our boys. Mm -hmm. I can, and sisters crying, we love having you all here. Please teach our boy, our babies need you. We need you, right? And I saw the look on that dude's face, mm -hmm. right? Because he, he probably was, you know, taking advantage of that, get with some of those sisters. We weren't, he could pick that up on our energy, right? So he was pissed. And I just said, I know what we can't be up in there because the boys do need us. They, they boys need us everywhere, right? They need black men, period, everywhere. And I can't fuck with the state like that. I don't fuck with the state, man. And that's why we didn't do it because I can't fuck with the state. And I can both like, well, I, I'll go. He never heard back from the dude anyway. Um, because people get threatened with that, but I said it to say the desperation the sisters had. Yes, that's they that's crying what like we, we need you know. I was about to start doing that and went in the room. I was in, and you know what I told them about? I said, You come to our class, bring your children to our class, which you ain't gonna see them start first. We frustrate them and they start crying. What you will see is the look on their face before they get somebody my size. And put them on their back and then a look afterwards right. in their eyes when they see they can exactly. do that shit. And when you see that, that's gonna make you proud. When they, when they right. feel that, that's something real. That's real shit. Right. So I'm sorry, let me I'll get off my horse. We talking about teaching and that and these things have happened, and I'm re I really deal with this in real life. You know, we see things and we've been marketed to, and we don't know what's going on. We don't know if you don't know something, it don't exist, like Baba said. And you'll be you'll be looking for this guy to to make your child cry, and and then build him back up. Anyway. Now hold on, why not learn? Say, I know you're not talking about the <laughs> Almighty <laughs> Umar. He is African people's only hope. Now I, 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 know, I won't give you the the right fist to be left fist on that one. Black power. Black, no. no black power. Yeah, now if you do, and just so you know, when you black power is always the right fist. Right? And I hope. I, I hope he does get to school. If he does, we'd be glad to come out there. So, you know, hey. Amen. Punishment does, doesn't change people for the better. They will resent you for it. Yes. This is true. Discipline and punishment are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like being put on punishment, but discipline. <laughs> right, true. exactly. In mathematics and martial arts, knowledge is not so much something that you possess, but rather a process of self discovery. You construct mathematical ideas or martial arts techniques internally as a way of dealing with a perceived problem. Therefore, the nature of the objective governs the selection and use of tools, whether they are legs, arm, hammer, knives, concepts, algorithms, or techniques. On the journey toward mastery in mathematics or, or martial arts, the practitioner learns to combine ideas or techniques through experience, hard work, and recognition of what is important. Eventually, the practitioner may feel like they're no longer simply using tools and concepts as presented to them, instead using their combinations, using their combinations to create something new. Depending on the amount of commitment and energy the practitioner has put in the training and studying, there is a hard won sense of accomplishment, satisfaction, and self-improvement. Um well, I'm gonna skip some because of our time. Okay, but um All right, so in addition to being confused regarding the goals of martial arts practice or learning mathematics, the general public is equally clueless as to the true benefits of martial arts and mathematics. Mm -hmm. Many people view mathematics as an abstract, non-creative body of knowledge that is to be memorized and applied in a mechanical way. On the contrary, mathematics is a science of patterns that demands creativity. Mathematics requires the use of a vivid imagination, a sense of scientific beauty, and the ability to reason in selecting ideas and concepts. In a similar vein, the true benefit of martial arts does not lie in its sporting value or as a means of fighting, but in the opportunity it provides for becoming a stronger, more complete individual. Okay. You do learn to defend yourself, of course. That's at the top of it. But the top way of defending yourself is avoiding things, avoidance, right? So at the highest level of that, 
then what's the main purpose of, of martial arts? To run fast, to hide, mm -hmm. could be. That's part of it. It's becoming stronger and a more complete individual. So it's more complete than just kicking and punching and throwing. You gotta learn how to hide. You gotta learn how to run. You gotta learn how to use tools. You gotta all those things. People tell me, well, you know, y'all don't do martial arts, y'all do combat because we use tools. Martial arts from the beginning use tools. So y'all don't do martial arts. <laughs> y'all do something else. Uh, board gaming, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, sporting, y'all doing something else. So, you know, it's a misconception. We don't see this shit the right way. And, and we're guided by movies and shit like that. Current movies hmm. provide a much distorted picture of what mathematics and martial arts really are, as the philosophy and the subtle beauty of the arts do not come across well on the screen. Movies about mathematics, like Hidden Figures, A Beautiful Mind, The Imagination Game, Pi, and Proof, frequently provide a negative image of mathematicians by portraying them as loner sociopathic savants. <laughs> at best, right. At best, movies may depict a mathematician as an absent-minded nerd engrossed in scribbles and equations, who has a kind of human calculator who can perform complicated mental calculations with amazing speed and accuracy, but may piss his pants. <laughs> the negative impact of these movies is their unrealistic representation of the mathematics problem-solving process. For instance, the crime drama Numbers, N-U-M-B, 3-R-S, you've seen that, depicts the main character solving problems in less than a day. However, in reality, a cadre of mathematicians might take months to solve such problems. In striking comparison, pun intended, striking <laughs> comparison, the violent martial arts movies contribute to the corruption of the discipline by portraying the stereotypical image of a martial artist as an empty-handed acrobatic sports illustrated model who screams at the top of their lungs while launching flying kicks. <laughs> the spectacular and flashy movements that require excellent athletic abilities are highly unrealistic with regard to self-defense. If so, shit. I'll be jacked up because I ain't doing rah, 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 all that screaming yeah. and high flying kicks and back flips. I'm not doing all that. Now we do Sabu rolls and bars. Still do the Van Damme split roundhouse every night. Yeah, I do that every now and then. <laughs> and every now and then I'm just walking down the street. I just drop to a split every now and then too. Um, many movies provide a romantic illusion of fighting, combat, and self defense, along with a Dungeons and Dragons like zero to hero fantasy of what it takes to master the martial arts. Yes. The portrayal of Danny LaRusso in The Karate Kid provides an example of a martial arts of a martial student who trains with a master for a short period of time and rapidly becomes proficient in karate do. Wins the the the, the uh right from the wax on, wax off, and all this. He wins the tournament with a little crane kick. So even worse, some movies and television shows present an unattractive image of martial artists by portraying them as mindless jocks or buffoons like show Nub's game yeah and even some of the students at bruce lee roy's coon in the last dragon <laughs> including the asian dude who could get down but he was a goof he was a he was, he right. was, a, he was a buffoon right uh and yes those are those are comedies but we can go beyond comedies right uh, or many of the heroes and villains in the chinese connection and return to dragon were buffoons the one dude, they, they gangsters, right? And he picks up Bruce Lee's uh, nunchaku and he goes, Boo! and it makes it sound, Boo! I mean, come on, man. Yeah. And bust himself in the head. So they make buffoons. And they were supposed to be martial artists, but they make buffoons up. You all gonna leave this restaurant. <laughs> Like man, who boy, and that's also racist. The way that's a messed that up voice over. That's a messed up voice. <laughs> you are gonna leave this restaurant. That's some um, British white man trying to dub in the shit, trying to sound like a brother from America, and it's embarrassing as hell. And those those folks were from Italy, by the way. Both learning mathematics and training in martial arts are vastly complex endeavors that require intense concentration in order to succeed. The transition from uniform, I'm excuse me, uninformed enthusiasts 
To committed student is a gradual one because it takes time to develop competence by going through a slow and constant contemplative process of change and improvement. Now we're talking about martial arts. Self-defense, you learn some techniques that you can just protect yourself with pretty quick, right. simple, but to be a martial artist, it's a process. And it has to you have to go through. It's a contemplative and constant process. Uh, it's a constant and contemplative uh, process of change and improvement, right? Gradually with practice, reflection, and experience gained through handling different opponents or solving problems, one begins to understand what mathematics or martial arts are really about. Just like Bob was saying when he was talking about, you know, the highest level is avoidance. Um, it's, 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 it's interesting because... I see different people get into it for different reasons and have different thoughts of how they're going to be once they get to a certain level. I had um, pre pre notions of how I would be and stuff like that. And the funniest thing is everybody ends up at the same place mentally. And what I mean by that is you you take a great deal of responsibility on by being a martial arts because you you have the understanding and you have the ability to to take life but you also understand how how quick it can happen for you as well to you you know what i'm saying even you know just by accident so you you get a a different value system for life and that's why the avoidance part is is, is interesting because when um when i first heard that the highest level of, is avoidance it didn't stick because i had just started and i'm like avoidance i understand like missing the punch or whatever like you know but avoidance like don't fight i didn't what the fuck am i doing this for you know what i'm saying and so that part i think is really important the part that you can't even understand i think until you get into it the artist part of the martial arts is the ability to create something new from the old idea. Or to create your own, I would say. So anyway, um, oh, hold up. I just took my notes. I gotta get them back. I just erased them. That dang it. See, I see things fall apart soon as probably like that. Let me find my notes real fast. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Um I think that's important. So, well, man, I lost my point. You know, I'm so used to okay. Achieving beauty. Yeah, on, on Nikki's part. I don't know where I'm at. I just lost my, at first glance, it may seem. Okay, no, here we go. Boom. Then you read that, then you read your part, not better me. Practice Practice on in mathematics. In mathematics and martial arts, knowledge is not so much something you know, I already said that. But. No, so you should be at. Uh, you should be at ideas and visions form the basis for the Okay, there we go. See, I fall apart as soon as you work out. Ideas and visions form uh, the basis for the practice of both mathematics and martial arts. The process of learning in these disciplines is a series of realizations and awakening. The harder you study, the more fascinating the art becomes. This is really, really true. The practitioners need to make a healthy obsession of technical details. It is one thing to understand the techniques and concepts, but it's another to know them intuitively. In mathematics and martial arts, practitioners must repeat certain movement techniques, exercise, and algorithms many times so they can become part of their natural reflexes or thought processes. Practicing a technique, which is a process or a set of rules for carrying out a particular task, especially the execution or performance of an artistic work or a scientific procedure or algorithm, which is a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or other problem solving operations, repeatedly not only makes you more proficient, but it also trains and develops your neuromuscular and cognitive system um, to act, respond, or think in accordance with the technique or concept. The outcome of a successful learning experience is the student's understanding becomes more refined as they begin to relate to more subtle dimensions of techniques and algorithms by examining why they work and, and what constitutes the elements of their effectiveness. 
The real secret to becoming an expert in martial arts or in mathematics is realizing that learning is a process of self-discovery. By striving to perfect your self-ability and understanding of the abilities of others, wisdom in the discipline develops. So we're about to get into techniques uh, that show the mathematics of martial arts. Uh, we'll start with Fibonacci. You need the math? Yes, we need the math. Um, we'll, we'll do two, Fibonacci and the fulcrum throw. Okay. Fibonacci, uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, you say, why is it an Italian name in African martial arts? We call it Fibonacci. So all the techniques, we give names to them so we can remember what they are. Uh, so if I, if I say teach them Fibonacci, they know exactly what I'm talking about. If I say teach them the Balogun school, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And now if I say teach them Ogun's iron elbow, which at first we were calling the lawnmower, lawnmower elbow. Now they know exactly what I'm talking about, right? So that's why we named them uh, Ogun. That, that is your iron elbow is not as English. But, you know, we flip between languages and all kinds of stuff as, as African people anyway. Exactly. Right. Bottom line is they know shit they know language anyway. So, so right. So in mathematics, the Fibonacci sequence, Fibonacci is Italian, is a sequence in which each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. Uh, about 800 years ago, the mathematician named Leonardo de Pisa, known as Fibonacci, wrote, a certain man put a pair of rabbits in a place surrounded by a wall. A pair of two rabbits in a place surrounded by a wall. How many pairs of rabbits can be produced from that pair in a year if it is supposed that every month each pair begets a new pair from which the second month on becomes productive? So those two rabbits have two rabbits. Those two rabbits, those two rabbits with those two rabbits have two more rabbits and those are like that, right? How many? Fibonacci's work on this problem led him to the, this sequence of numbers. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, on to infinity. Okay, so the Fibonacci uh, technique seeks to add the previous two amounts of energy. Let me do the Fibonacci technique. To put the opponent on their face. And you say, well, how is that? How does that work? Okay, you add the two numbers, the first two numbers to get the next number, and then you add the number. So zero plus one is one. So zero plus one, third number is one, right? Then you do that number plus the previous number. So now it's one plus one is two for the next number. Then it's two plus one is three for the next number. Right? Then it's three plus the previous number. Two is five. Then it's five plus the previous number. Three is eight. Then it's eight plus the previous number. Five is 13. Then it's 13 plus the previous number. Eight is 21. You got me? That's how the Fibonacci sequence acts. Well, that's the technique, too. We're building. It's not just one plus one, right? It's one plus one is two, two plus one is three. So as we're building, it's, it's increasing in its power. That's how the Fibonacci sequence works, which we're about to get into right now. And so we knew the technique, didn't have a name for it. I was talking, I said, what is it, for, you know, where it increases itself in that way? Uh, Young, that's why I came here. You know, it's a Fibonacci. As, as I'm learning, you know, dealing with math, I said, wait, it's a Fibonacci secret. We're talking through different names. Everybody, oh, that makes sense. And so when Akin Bobola, who's a mathematician, moved here, and I said, we're about to learn the Fibonacci technique. He's Fibonacci. And so he immediately understood what we were doing. Which one brings both of us in at the same time? I think it's is it this? 
So you have to turn down that side. I got it. You have to turn that oh, sound okay. down. I got you. And it's not that one. It's this one. There we go. And we're about to get into it. Are you into Carl Jung? Uh, no, you don't like my music because Carl Jung stole a lot of his shit. We talking about archetypes straight from uh, Europe tradition archetypes in Europe. Uh, in Europe, Ipa, we deal with the Orisha, and I kind of deal with the Abosun. He stole straight from them. He's always taken from other uh, cultures. So for the Yoruba, the people of Borneo. Um, and so if I want information on those things, I'll just deal with those African cultures or, or, or indigenous cultures he stole from. Um, there's a, a author of some Yoruba, some Ipa books that is heavy into young. And I'm reading it. And I'm like, man, you know, I he breaking down the archetypes and blah, blah, blah. I didn't know one that is a white man. And he was just taking the Orisha and trying, you know, proving them with the archetypes. I'm like, you just proving that Carl Young stole from me. There's some artillerism in the chat, too. The study, is that the study of a physical motion for labor or something? So Stalin was a big fan. All right, here we go. Move this over a little bit. Don't want that mother to flip off. I'll be crying. All right, so. You get lower for them to be able to see the direction for uh, Once it, once it, and it's completion, yeah. All right, so. The people not your sequence. Say, I could do it to him. He grabs me. Anytime you're grabbed, let me go to home. Hold on. Anytime you're grabbed, he's touching me, as you can see. I'm also touching him. If, if he's touching me, I'm touching him. So never be afraid of that. Okay. So you, you learn it off of a grab. But a lot of times it happens like this. We're in here. I can bring him down to me and then I can hit him with the Fibonacci. Say, you learn from here, I come up, mm. he grabs here, my hand comes up like I want to point at his face, but my thumb brushes his arm. I want to point outside. Uh, do this side so you can see. I want to point outside his arm. That allows me to grab him. Jack me up at the same time. So I can grab him there. I can I can move there. Put that in my hand. I can feel the I can feel the from the outside. I can feel the from the inside. Okay. Um, move that down on the red watch. Trying to see which is better to see. This is yeah, this is side they can see. So in Fibonacci, if he grabs me, another thing I can do. Just come, you see how I'm coming and bring my hand to the outside and I'm right here. And then from there, I just go. Uh, the key is being relaxed, not using strength to pull. And it's, I pull, so I'm going to pull him towards the ground. The energy is going to increase and you'll see it. I'm, I stay relaxed. It comes through my back down to my feet. And once the energy hits my feet, I step back, I kneel. Closer to you. Oh shit! I got you. Make sure the Lord Jesus. Make sure the mic Oh Lord Jesus, fire! No, I got it. All right. Step back. I want to make sure we're in a good place. Boom! Right there. Let me close that mic. Is so. Oh, it's the other way. Is the mic plugged in? Yes. Real quick. This is interesting stuff. By older, will love this. Live stream on replay. Excellent. Okay. So, so you like his ideas, but you prefer the older traditions. Yes. So, when I go, you'll feel it when you, if, if, if you were to be very careful because there's a lot of power in this. When you go, you'll feel it. 
Um, when it hits your feet, your feet want to plant to the ground, step back and kneel. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So remember, stay relaxed. Like I said, in a combat situation, you can hit him different ways. You can get this. He, he, he strikes. I can, I'm down, and then I go. He's not going to do it as hard as he would normally do it. No, and I'm going to be resisting a lot more than somebody that got caught off guard because it, it'll take me way. It's a, it's a throw, basically, almost. Yes, it is. Um, this going to be a nasty ball. I'm going to fall over. You want me to bring this closer this way? Um, I think I can do better this way so we don't hit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to do it this way. Uh, from the inside, so he, he can, at least half his body gets on this thing. And we can turn around so we see it. Because here, you're going to blue yeah. right on the. Okay, so from here. So. <laughs> That's it there. I'll do it again. That's Watch his body, and you can slow it. I guess you can slow it down with some effects or whatever, or what you're watching again. So I have him, and for whatever reason, Right, he grabs me, I grab him, and then I go. He grabs me, excuse me, sir, I, and then I go. <laughs> and that's people not you. If I did it hard, he goes flat. I go flat. That's what y'all would see. He's just saving me a little bit. I got on white shorts. You want to switch shorts so they can see it from this way, bro? Because they, they got this camera now, so they, they're catching this one. So, should I do the other arm? Or? Uh. That's for the outside or yeah, maybe this one, this one, like this maybe the show. Well, I'm going past you that way then if I do that. Or maybe this way. Yeah, I can I can bring you this way, but yeah. it's gonna be like I said, it's gonna be a nasty one. I'm good, I'm good, because you got Matt Holmes okay. stuff right here. So this one, say he, he didn't grab me up here, I was up, and then I go. Shoo! You okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. That's okay. people not to. Because I know how to fall, I'm not going and flat. That's why I let and he's doing it that hard. Let his arm go so you can hit that because yeah. that one hits harder. You heard the sound. Yeah, on the ground. That and from the hard. outside, it's harder. Yeah, that's Usually, you train from the inside because it's easier on the body. Right. This is this is better for you if you're in combat, but you can't determine how you're going to end up grabbing. Right. Arm. This is good to be able to do it. Right. Right. So... You, you okay for another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to do this slow so they can see. So he grabs. I just relax, start bringing my arm down <laughs> to my side. If I do it hard, it's different. It's with flash. Right. So I go, I, but if I'm, if I'm not relaxed, it's different. It's a different energy. If I'm relaxed, my hand's just going. <laughs> Right, yeah, he's so he's going it, that the technique. Just relax, relax as you pull down. Don't it's, tense yourself up. It's not easy to get. It's simple. It's not easy. You got to train it like everything else. Yep. So once he's going down, I feel it in my feet, like my almost one to plant me. So I step. step down. Okay. Keep that momentum. Yeah, he goes down. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Fibonacci. That's how that's done. One of the things that mesmerized me when I first got, I was like, how does that work? Like, how does it work? <laughs> but it's the, it, it works. It does. It works. Uh, so, that's why that's, that's quite easy. Easy. You know, in that turn. So that is how to do the Fibonacci. Uh, we'll stick with that. I was going to show four from two, but for the time, uh, we're already past three o'clock. Uh, okay, well, just go ahead and show with, you. I won't deal with the physics of it. The physics of a full control is he is brought over this lever. Uh, this lever brings, I mean, lever brings him over the full control and he falls. Okay. The mathematics of this is I'm I don't want to get too deep here, but I am actually making you got let me, let me see a couple sticks. 
so I, they can see just to make it easy for them. Principle. Two sticks. Then the fight position from. So, with these two sticks, fight position here, here. My energy wants to come here. Now, if you can move out the way from me real quick, don't touch the stick. That is what in math. What is that in math? What's, what, 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 what symbol? Uh, X. It's an X, which is a time symbol, but it's also a plus, uh -huh. which is the uh, addition symbol. You will. What we're going to do is do, so you say, well, how do you do that? Come, coming back into that fight position. I'm coming here across his feet. So that his feet are there. I'm coming here. That's a plus. So I'm adding to his body plus in his position with mine. Come up to come over to. So to do the fulcrum throw, same. I'll move his foot to the, it's in the front. I add to, that's the plus sign between his legs there, okay? I'm going against his anus and his navel. That's a, that's a whole nother thing which I won't talk about until you, unless you come to class. But I bring him across, 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 across <laughs> his plus, and he ends up on the ground. He comes across that, that fulcrum. Okay. And, and Baba ends up in that spot where I was at. Exactly. Okay. That's the principle. So I add it to right his energy. So it's here when people say, well, you use that force against him, right? He punches us now. Okay. So he punches. I'm adding to yeah. his. I'm using his force against him. So really, I'm adding it to me. But also, if I'm adding it to me, I'm adding it to you. Mm -hmm. Two plus two is still two plus two on the other side. Mm -hmm. So if a person is striking at you, they, they, they're, they're causing force. Two, then I plus two. So we both can bring it. We're both going to bring it. If he, if he strikes, I connect to him. I don't want to stop this energy. Unbroken I, circle. I want to keep it moving. This is the mathematic uh, uh, formula, right? I keep it moving. Two plus two. Now the people not to go there. And plant him on his head. Or I bring him this way, and now he catches the fulcrum drum. I'm going. I got to go. He's going to make sure I go all the way down. He's going to <laughs> slow. I got to go. <laughs> so he catches the fulcrum drum. Okay? You. So that's the mathematics of those techniques. And any technique, get in the fight position. Yeah. You say, well, what do you want to hit him with? The minus sign. And that means I don't go between his legs to hit him with the minus. Okay. Teach him, man. Teach him, man. So I don't go between there. That would be the plus sign hitting him. You say, well, what the fuck? Well, how the minus sign? The minus sign is always the grabs and things of that nature. Mm. I grab them, throw them off. And or back here, once again, the Fibonacci is the minus. I don't go between your legs. Mm. So that's a minus I'm technique. Learning now, learning now, learning now. But they I've always taught that with positive and negative techniques. Yeah, it just you just call them something else. Right, exactly. Ah, no, like, like, positive like, and negative like, are always plus and minus. Just looked at them, that's a different way of calling it. I love this guy. He's a great, great teacher, man. So, and what he was saying is reading that y'all can only think about it like the more you learn, the more you realize how advanced it is. Simple, 
with advanced and that's mathematics. It's, 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 it's advanced mathematics. Even it's still simple. Taking the same. So principles. calculus, trigonometry, those things. Don't let that throw you off. Your children that's in school, don't let that throw them off. We are math. Everything we're doing is math. So it's it's just the principles have to be broken down for us simply. Once again, it's not your child. It's the teacher. I want to put you on, I want to ask you a question to put you mm -hmm. on the spot. Do you, do you, I know you, because you come from Muslim background. Mm -hmm. Originally, yeah. Uh, originally. Do you still believe or, uh, and think that the supreme mathematics are still, still, can still apply? Can you still use that? Okay, so. Now that you've been, you've been left that went to Europe or you. So the, the supreme mathematics what he's talking about is the numbers so the nation didn't deal too much with numerology that became five percenters dealt more with numerology you will those well, you things can be used but they're overused mm. to the point that it was spooky right so you know uh if you're speaking that as just your language for whatever reason uh, and you're speaking that to people who don't speak that shit, they don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. Well, you know, now I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, seven. I understand that. You're calling the person seven is the, the seven letter G, is God. You're calling him a God, right? I got that, but that doesn't mean that my mama would get that. Right, 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 right. So as I'm talking, I have to know how to move that with code switching, how to switch. Who I'm talking about because people don't know the fuck you're talking about. Uh, 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 just a, a, a goddamn uh, spoiler alert most people don't know shit about the five percentage. <laughs> so if you're always talking like that, they don't know what you're talking about to the point where they think that's just that's just New York talk, right? Like, they even even people say, uh, they say, uh, how they say it wrong, word is word is. Word is um they say something wrong. Word is born. Yeah, word is born. That is not what the thing is. Mm -hmm. But because people are confused, they don't know about this word is bomb, and all of that comes from the nation of Islam. Right. But when you take that and now you take a, a group of folks and they just out using it in rap and shit like that, motherfuckers don't know how to know what the lyrics in any song is. Right. So now they are word is born, word is born. When I came down here, somebody saying word is born. They would be cultural people. I said, excuse me. Now I'm I'm just you know, old martial arts dude. But excuse me, it's word is bond, and bond is life, and I'll give my life before my word shall fail. That's the whole saying, and it's towards word is bond. Word is born doesn't make sense in that, does it? Mm -hmm. they look at, huh? I never heard that saying because that word is bond is just word is bond. It's it it, it that's not the whole saying. So people right. know what the fuck you talking about. It's wrong when it's done. Word bond. That, that that's like you're saying word and, and word became that. You know, you going to the store today. Word, like just yes. No word is bond is deeper than that. So if I tell you, man, I got your back in the fight. My word is my bond, and my bond is my life. I give my life before my word shall fail. So that means I, I would not lie to you when I say that. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say it yeah. because my word is my bond. That's what that means. Not yes. Not yes. God damn it. That, that, see that that shit. That means that makes our word meaningless. Right. It doesn't have the strength and the meaning when we just fuck with shit like that, man. You gotta know. We're talking about math. You gotta know the culture. Well, we're dealing with supreme mathematics. You gotta know the culture. And that means the people don't know it because you're not teaching the culture, my brothers and sisters. You're not teaching the culture to the people, so they just saying the shit wrong. It ain't me supposed to come at us about that. It's y'all. Who do it? Either in the five percent or more so in the nation. You're supposed to come because that is key. It's key that we know that our word should be bond and our bond is our life and your bond is mathematics because you are math that is important we talk about the supreme mathematics like it's a separate 
thing and it's only for certain elite folks, we are mad. So we got to know how to use that shit. Well, how can we know how to use I said earlier, it's not the people that's the problem, it's the teachers. If you teach your own bullshit, so teach our people well, no matter what your tradition is. So do I have, what's my feeling about supreme mathematics? There it is. I feel it has to be taught well. Otherwise, it's just confusion. And confusion by any other name is confusion. People, I have to agree with yeah. that. Same with Ifa. Folks just, Ifa is getting real popular now. Folks just saying shit. Right. I'm Ogunin. I'm Ogunin. What the fuck is that? That's not even a word. That's not even a word. You just added shit. Okay, black people, we add shit, but make that shit make sense and don't insult the culture that it come from. Ogun, you spank your child talking about your Ogun. Ogun ain't got shit with spank because of Ogun spank you, you kill it. Right. So don't, that's just not taken lightly. Don't take Ogun lightly like that. You spanking your child, that's you spanking your child. I'm not judging you whether that's right or wrong. Sometimes a child got to be tapped. If, if your child about to touch fire, you ain't got time to negotiate and, and reason with your yeah, two-year-old. My dear son, who do not touch the fire will burn you. Your <laughs> flesh will blister. You ain't got time to do that shit. He burnt by the time you done that. He went, pop! Don't do that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> but he ain't touch that fire. Exactly, he ain't burnt. And he, every, every time he get ready, you look at him, raise that eyebrow, you know what's going to happen. Right. So I'm with that. I'm cool with that. But we having a discussion. My son said, you know, I think, you know, after martial arts, it's, it smell like shit. And you back, right? Like, I've been doing this all my life. Now that, now that is what the, it's about having a conversation now. Right. You know, what? Okay. I, I fuck you up because they disagree. With what you believe. I'm starting to see things when I was a kid different now that you're talking, <laughs> <laughs> talking that in your <laughs> If my mom was you watching it, I ain't gonna beat you like that. You ain't gonna like that. <laughs> I deserve it every time I got popped in the mouth. Just yeah, now <laughs> I, I, I would say when I got popped, I, I earned that. I earned all my I earned every bit of it, to every, be honest. So I, 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 I didn't get it that I didn't get it that much, Me but too. I had sense like shit. I ain't gonna repeat what I did. I never got a <laughs> for the same thing right. twice. And that that's that disturbing when children do that. What's wrong? You want this? Right, exactly. <laughs> like that that's disturbing. Yeah, I thought oh, god damn, don't do the same nah, shit. People twice. going left. I'm guaranteed I'm going right for going <laughs> Right, exactly. So um Supreme Mathematica. I want to say peace mm-hmm. to the new to the new people in the chat. We appreciate y'all. Um any suggestions that you have. Um, for new shows, for different shows, for things that you want to see, let us know. If you got any suggestions about tech stuff, be prepared to to, to work with us, to work for us <laughs> yeah. before you start suggesting. We don't know how to do this stuff, but we are right. doing our best. We're constantly getting better, so we appreciate you. Yeah, some some of the stuff when you saying, you know, technically you do so and so, you can post so and so. They sound like wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't get it. I look at these other folks, man, and how they doing theirs, and like we get, we gonna get there. You do. I mean, when I look at, uh, like on the previous morning show, that uh, bring up the such and such clip, oh, and they I'll be like, God damn it, I want to bring up clips like Look, that. I vow to you, we're gonna be bringing up shit soon. <laughs> we're gonna be bringing up stuff. Just give us a chance. We're gonna be bringing some because stuff. Because I'm like, damn, uh, you know, I can bring up a clip of somebody teaching math, and then pause it and then talk about how that math deals with technique, yeah. but yeah. don't have a clue how to do that, to be honest with you. That is true, but I have no clue whatsoever. Uh, are we about to be um, in the, in a couple of weeks? Are we going to be at the Happy Natural doing that on live? Yeah, he, he said we're going to do Happy Natural. But I never heard back from him. Uh oh. All right, so we're going to wait. So we're gonna keep that on standby. We're going to let that out. <laughs> yeah. We don't know yet. So hey, if you're out there, Deron, uh, hey, we, we're here. Uh, we'll hit them other day. See what we're doing about that. Okay. So we can let y'all know where we're going to be at the end of the month. I think I might be. I think I'm. I think I'm on vacation on the second of September. Well, yeah, I'll be out of town. Oh shit, I'll be out of town. Uh, so when the second September is my daughter is Tunde birthday. The Tunde means the mother returns. Talking about the grandmother, my mother's birthday, which is her grandmother, is on September fifth. They look just alike. Wow. All these things happen in the family. But anyway, uh, 
have always happened in our family. So I'll be out of town uh, August 31st through August through to September 6th. Okay. So that that one we'll do remotely that weekend. Whatever that weekend it is. You'll be on vacation, but so I may just do it myself if you're not available. We're gonna work it out. We're gonna work it out. Well, so maybe we get Kalanji up in here and do some technique. I know y'all would like to see that. Well, I ain't gonna be here to do that. Maybe you do it. I'll cancel my vacation. Ta. To put Kalanji do some <laughs> technique. Do some techniques. I will cancel it. <laughs> Piece of Kalanji, matter of fact, he on uh, and uh, and and I just spoke with him yesterday, matter of fact. He's uh, I think he's out of town right now, dealing with the uh, the, the, the passing of his in our son's mother. Yes, yeah, so I just want to send out our condolences. Yeah, yes. definitely to his family and the family of. Uh, and may she rise in power. Definitely, definitely. So, so what's it out there? So, and um, anybody else? Hopefully not. We haven't lost anybody else. Uh, doing this, doing August. There was a lot of birthdays uh, in my family. This is Black August. We yeah. had Marcus Garvey's birthday. There's a lot going on. Um, my two of my daughters, Jo Ying. Who's the oldest? Who's August 16th. Baba Pishola is also 16th. He's our Oluo, our teacher, in uh, uh, August 16th. August 7th, my daughter Kose Wokan. My oldest sister, August 6th. Yeah. Her oldest son, August 6th. She had on her birthday, him on her birthday. So that August thing is strong. Yeah, this you got the birth of hip hop, hip hop birth of hip hop, <laughs> right? Starting in August, Black August, mm -hmm. starting in August with my children and grandchildren, it goes all the way from August now into January. Wow. And then I'm February, if you add myself. Woo. So birthday, 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 mm -hmm. birthday, birthday. Yeah, I guess right. I haven't got a bunch of children and grandchildren. It seems like every day is a birthday in August for you. You always. <laughs> Man, it's just so, so much that happens. In August, you know, um, enjoy hip hop too. Celebrating this, uh, you know, this weekend. I think it's probably the last weekend, maybe, but I know it's the last in all, pretty much all year. So. I would say watch Jared's tear down of hip hop. Also, oh, uh, it, it was. Uh, I think sure you should would agree with it. Um, well, basically, he's asking the question: well, What has it done in these fifty years for us and towards our liberation? Not a goddamn thing. Uh, oh, Daruba yeah. asked that question one time too, similar, you know, and towards our liberation, and you know, we can debate it, but when you say towards our much. liberation, then that's when it, it, it right, dies. that's when it right. Yeah. If it, it does something for your for your pockets, if it does something for your right, if it does something for your your heart, comfort. feeling good, definitely. But yeah. as far yeah. as us being free, yeah, ain't done for that. I don't but, but but most what entertainment, has, most entertainment is not right. What I will say is people um, are, are talking, and I'll end with this right before it's hip hop. One thing I noticed, um, first of all, it's not big enough. We haven't done it in a big enough way that we really celebrate. But nothing, no record labels have done anything, have done anything um, to celebrate any 50th. No record label, I've, I don't know any record, Def Jam ain't done nothing. No part, no parties, no festivals. It should be festivals all through America yeah, because hip hop it starts to be conferences. It, it, now, it, now, let me say this because one thing I just want to say hip hop is responsible for a lot of these uh moguls that have left hip hop and doing other things yes. now. On now our let, let, me, let me say this to uh our brother comrade Kalani, he did this years ago. He said, Let's do and we should have done it. We were remiss, brother, this month. I'm not doing it. Like, God damn. Uh, I thought about it the other day. He hit me up years ago and said, let's do a hip-hop martial arts conference. Mm. That should have been done this year. Yeah. Because even the martial arts influence, this is also the 50th year anniversary of Enter the Dragon. Yeah. So you could have just and, and, and with martial arts, the influence of martial arts on hip hop has been on black people, period, but on hip hop has been tremendous. Just the art, the, the, the hip hop artists. artists that are in martial arts, you can pull it's, it's many and, of them, and, and and I mean, even the movement 
Uh, when you talk about uh, up rocking, top yeah. rocking, that's all dealing with martial arts. Uh, shit, breaking a lot of that is martial arts movement from Capoeira. Yeah. Okay. So it's so strong. Fifty two blocks is, is is definitely influenced by the martial arts. There's a video uh, when when me and Wise did they were the masters that year. And he's doing, he's, he's going through it. The music was, was hot as shit. And he's doing the techniques with it. Man, that shit was so smooth. We, we should have done that. It's too late now to get a, a conference together that's worth his salt in yeah. a few days. But we should have done that, man. That should have been planned. We planned that out and get people here a couple years ago. Um, we only get 50 years once. So we lost that opportunity, but uh, on that, let me say that we are in a new location uh, at the Church of Ogunle Wa, <laughs> and um, we're, we're, we're training in there, and we're about to market that place, because that's the place we're going to permanently have as our home for, for Egbe Ogun. And so we're going to do an open house. Um, probably in, in a couple of weeks, at least that, and then we will do something to honor hip hop. Yeah. Great, 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 great. I like it. I like it. I like All it. right, y'all. So we're about to break out of here. Love you all. Stay black or whatever it is that you may be. This is interesting looking at the. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stay safe, y'all. Peace. Right. I'm, I'm going for that one. It's this one, y'all. All right. All right. Peace out. Y'all be safe. Have a great See y'all next week. Go. Forward the show. Yes. Go back.